Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the bar. During my Thanksgiving drive home, I was looking outside of the window as my parents drove, and I had a very full stomach, and I thought to myself on my way back from New York City, what is out there? And I gazed upon the distance, and I saw a casino. And then I thought to myself, I wonder what they serve to drink at casinos. And then I did a Google search, and it turns out that they serve a lot of different drinks at casinos. They're like fully stocked bars, so there's no particular cocktail that you're more li likely to find at a casino, unless it's like themed, or they have like something going on there. Um, but there is a cocktail out there called the Casino Cocktail, and it seems that they serve a bunch of martinis and stuff at casinos. So, via that kind of all over the place logic, tonight we present Casino cocktails. Cocktails that I guess you might find me ordering while at a casino, but I haven't been to a casino in years. I think the last time that I was at a casino um, was something else entirely. What was it? It was it was a while ago. I was a very young boy, I think. Not, not a very young boy. I had just turned like 16, I think, or 18. It was one of the two. Um, and I think what wound up happening was the um i was at the i was at the casino i was like oh my god i'm a gambling age i can go out there and i can like gamble because gambling is absolutely something that i, that I can do uh, now that i am of gambling age in new jersey but they were serving a bunch of drinks there so i actually wasn't able to uh to continue imbibing because they kicked me off the floor entirely um my spotify was going a little weird i don't know what happened there the music shut off that's all right we wind up fixing it um, but yeah, so I was there with a couple of friends of mine at the casino, and I was like, yo, I'm of gambling age, let's go gamble and I'll play the slots and stuff like that. I didn't actually go up to any tables, otherwise they probably would have been like, kid, what the hell are you doing here? Um, but eventually, after we had earned quite a few bucks, we were walking around, and somebody came up to us and just like, hey, can I see your ID? And I was like, here you go, sir, here's my ID, I'm old enough to gamble so I can be in the casino. And they were like, yeah, but we're serving a bunch of alcohol here, so like, you actually can't be here. Sorry about that. I was like, oh. Well, that's okay. We'll just leave then. And so me and my friends, we just, we walked. There was my fiance and one of my good friends there as well. We just, we went back to our hotel room. We had a couple of bucks. We weren't complaining at all. Um, many, many years later, I have yet to be back to a casino, at least for the purposes of playing. There was, there's been, there has been two convention or like expos that I've been to. One was a wedding expo because newsflash, Hannah and I are getting married. Uh, nah, not next year, the year after. It's coming close. Uh, it's coming close. Um, we were there for the wedding expo, and we were also there for like a food and wine expo as well. Not food and wine, it was like it was like liquor and food and stuff. I think it was like Taste Philadelphia or something. But they happened to be in the same place uh, that happened to have like a big casino on like the first floor or whatever. Just a hotel area. Like might have been like the Wyndham or something like that. In any case, I have not legitimately been back to a bar, or a, a casino, excuse me, in quite a while. Um, so I reminisce, and I imagine, what would it be like? I think if I had to start things off, the first thing that I would probably order when I go to a casino, I just, I have this vision that when you're at a casino bar, when you've got the lights flashing, it smells like tobacco, or depending on what casino you're in, I guess, um, I feel like you, get, you go and you get something in a martini glass. And like, when I think of things that are in a martini glass, I think of naturally a martini. I, for one, I think the first time that I had a martini, I was kind of, I was expecting something a little bit different. I was like, you know, I need a martini. I've never had one before. It can't possibly be that bad. And so me having taken a bartending class or two previously was like, I want a dirty martini dry to try to go as far south of whatever I had had a cocktail previously. And so what I got was something that really wasn't that pleasant at the time. I'm sure if I went back and looked at it, that it'd probably be something perhaps a little bit a little bit better. But uh, for, for those who are uninitiated, dry martini just means that it's got some dry vermouth in it as opposed to other types of vermouth. I think most of them usually have dry vermouth in it, although, you know, you can, you can have it otherwise. It's just whatever you want, really. Um, and you also, it was also dirty as well. So it had like olive brine or like pickle brine or something into it. I don't have any pickle brine. I did go to the store today and I picked up some cocktail onions. So I want to try, I've never had a Gibson before. A Gibson is basically a martini, but you put a cocktail onion in it. It's a whole new cocktail because it's dressed differently. I can walk out the door and I'm a completely different person because I decided to put on a different shirt. Today, I decided to go with my more mellow outlook because if I'm going out of the town for casinos and stuff, I have to dress modestly. So I put on a fedora and I'm not wearing an undershirt. Gasp. It's scandalous. Um, 
this may seem a little little contradictory it's it's because it's sarcasm in any case following up with my sarcasm will be drinks drinking and recovering from the sarcasm the first cocktail that i would like to cover tonight is a dry martini i want to start things off a little classic i suppose and also because i just recently i had a birthday and so somebody bought for me a very very nice gin and i thought what better way to sample this new gin well then to create three cocktails for myself uh the first thing that i made was a gin and tonic it was wonderful you just take the gin you put the tonic put it together it was wonderful i enjoyed it at the party that i got the the, the gin at and it was lovely um the other drink was naturally a negroni negronis are gin campari and sweet vermouth uh i've had many of them especially with the gin that i, I shouldn't be talking around the gin it's the botanist gin nobody's nobody's sponsoring this or anything It'd be really cool though but i've been told very very good things about the botanist gin because it literally shows up on every single like cocktail content creators channels and stuff oh what's up more than awesome i do love me some botanist i like botanist as well you are a lucky lucky individual tonight how do we mark this how do we mark this how do we mark lucky individuals here here's a card for you what's your lucky card we're gonna pull a lucky card for more than awesome let's see what it is can you guess what card it is? At least try to guess the suit. I will I will pick it out for you. And I will put it... Oh, I might have just revealed it. I'm going to get another lucky card. This is the lucky card. I'm going to place it down here. And we'll see what suit it is. We'll guess. And hello to Anderson as well. Welcome back to the bar. We've got gin today. Gin is my friend. I actually love gin. Gin, like, when asked what my favorite spirit is which is how i got this because somebody had asked what do I, what's my favorite thing and i was like i like gin so i got it for my birthday i said gin because it's botanical it's different i don't know i feel like gin has so much depth to it that my tongue just can't comprehend so eight of spades we guess it's the eight of spades it's the five of clubs but you were very very close probably is there an eight of spades in here this is not a complete deck of cards i wonder if there is an eight of spades in here eight of hearts eight of Eight of, eight of spades. There we go. We got it. This is your lucky card. I'm going to put it here for now. And we move on. Last night, this is more than awesome, they had a Negroni with Grand Classico instead of Campari. It was delightful. Actually, I made my Negroni. I also had a Negroni last night. Oddly enough. Coincidence? Probably not. Uh, but I used, instead of, instead of Campari, I used the Mr. Black Coffee Amaro, which is like more of like a bitter orange and coffee flavor thing. And it was... Oh my god, it was so good. I was doing, I was catching up some on some graphic design work last night for like my own personal stuff and for other stuff as well. And like that just like totally hit the spot. I was able to go like after work ended, which I already put in extra hours for, I was able to go for like another like four hours just sipping this coffee, that, just this coffee Negroni. Ooh, it was so good. I would recommend it. Um, the spirit I'm referring to is this guy. It's, it's just delightful. Negronis come in so many different forms. I feel like we could do an entire cocktail recipe on just Negroni riffs, uh, uh, Negroni riffs alone. And I, I'd be none the wiser. I, that'd be a wonderful idea. So the first thing that I'm making is a dry martini. We need gin for that. Technically speaking, any of your martinis and stuff, you could put vodka in there as well instead of gin. I personally don't feel the same way. Or like, we'll put it into an analogy. Some people are very, very particular about their whiskey. They're like, oh, whiskey? Ugh, I hate that stuff. Get it out of here. Rye is terrible. Some people feel the same way about tequila, which is where I came from. At first, I wasn't really a tequila kind of person. It's just like my mother drinks a lot of tequila, and so the smell kind of followed me through my existence and stuff and it was a bad smell at first but then i started mixing cocktails and stuff and i came around eventually some people my fiance in particular feel the exact same way about gin if it's got gin in it and for anna as well rum it's like it's like oh keep that stuff away from me i don't want it so like if you're that kind of individual i guess lucky for you martinis are kind of like a like, like martini is kind of like a bastardized name i suppose like not every martini has gin in it and i guess technically not all the uh, the other sets of martinis don't all have vodka in it but they usually do i think i was i was on i was on instagram the other day and i cannot take credit for the statement i think it was Ooh, I think it was Home Sweet Spirits was the account that I follow on there that was did a whole like review video on on uh, martinis in general and the martini just became kind of became a moniker for drinks that were really really popular that happened to have vodka in it and usually are themed like an apple teeny aka the apple martini the espresso teeny aka the espresso or coffee martini the porn star martini which has a passion fruit floating on top of it don't know what makes it so sexual passion fruit in the heat of the passion we or something like that. 
I don't really know. Um, but personally, I like my martinis with gin, which might make an apple teeny taste a little different. Uh, I don't have the proper ingredients for that, otherwise I would totally try that. But um, definitely something that's worth exploring at some point. I'm also gonna need dry vermouth and orange bitters, and uh, you can you can technically you can shake these if you want to. You can stir it. I'm gonna stir mine because I want a very clear martini, and I don't want any air bubbles. Oh, Anderson also says, "Hey, Homestream Spirits is me." Oh my God, is it really? <laughs> oh my god, LMIO, what's going on? I think, I, I hope I'm quoting the right person. I believe that was on your story, I think. I hope, I hope I'm not incorrect about that. For some reason, I get your account mixed up with somebody else's, and I don't, and I don't know why. Who really knows? In any case, I love your stories, I love your content, and I very much appreciate you popping on. Hello. <laughs> I take a lot of inspiration from the other in, uh, Instagrammers out there, I guess. There's, you, there's your Twitch tenders, there's your drinkstagrammers i suppose and it's a it's a relatively new community i really didn't start like reaching out to people and whatnot until like i think it was like it was like four or five months ago I, i'm a little sheltered but i started talking it out with my therapist and stuff and i'm feeling a lot better especially behind the camera in any case yeah they made a negroni real first and then the martini one the other day well if you are in fact the famous home sweet spirits how are you doing i noticed that you had a little bit of a cold the other day i hope things are going well for y'all across the pond there anyways Wonderful people, wonderful people everywhere. Don't let me get sidetracked. Martinis. I'm gonna go get some dry vermouth. It's in my fridge over here. I'm pretty sure, if I'm correct in saying, that you try to, you wanna keep your vermouths in the fridge. They're fortified wines. So technically, as wines often do, they oxidize, they change their flavor. I've had this, I'm, I'm guilty. I have had this dry vermouth in my refrigerator for a long, long time, and I barely, I have so much more left of it. I recently started, Actually, I want to show shit off because I'm, su I'm super duper happy about it. Also, because people in my life apparently love me in a, in a currency kind of way, I got this book for my birthday as well, and I've been learning so, so, so much from it. One of the things that I actually learned from somebody else, one of my personal friends, is like, you don't really want to keep your, your, you don't want big bottles of vermouth because they oxidize, they change flavor and stuff, and you actually benefited more by smaller bottles of vermouth because you go through it a little more quicker, it has less time relatively to like, like, the, 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 a lot of this is going to be pretty oxidized, so that's just going to wind up happening. Unfortunately, Anderson is still very much under the weather, but surviving for what it's worth. This is at least good. A toast to your health. There's no alcohol here yet, but a toast to your health. The alcohol might not be helping with the whole, the whole sick thing anyways. More Than Awesome also says, Tonight's I found a bottle of Grand Cla drink is a bad word, which is a last word, but there is Grand Class inside of it instead of Luxardo. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Is it Grand Cla or Grand Class? I want to say class, but there's only a single S there, and if that's a spelling error, I'm so sorry for pointing that out. But it's, if it's French, then I must be corrected. This guy. As I continue with my rambling, I'm going to grab a stirring apparatus. I'm also going to need some ice as well, but I'm going to put my... I guess one thing that I don't know for sure of is I'm trying to... I'm trying to Take a step back from things. After becoming a more refined individual, reading, um, you know, liquid intelligence, trying to refine my own, uh, my own craft and stuff like that, I'm trying to slow things down a little bit. Really consider the choices that we make behind the bar, because one of the things that I really wish I was able to do, and probably one day will, is to be able to take like the lessons of past cocktails and past mixologists and apply them forward to make new crazy. Or not super crazy, just new things. But like using knowledge to do to, to do things as opposed to kind of going out there randomly, which I think I do right now. It's probably just a concept of my if my like I guess because I'm relatively young and I haven't been drinking for that long. It's only been four years so far. I promise that. But I want to think about that. I would think that I probably want a thing of ice in this glass because the thing that you get with stirring is you get to kind of control the dilution of anything that you stir in there when you're shaking things around it's just a very very vigorous process and you don't really have that much control over things um then again i could be necessarily wrong about that i'm just kind of ripping the words out of a book and if this person is incorrect i'd be i'd be sad i would be sad and i'm like blanking on their name so i'm gonna like cheat by looking over the counter for some reason like i forget the silliest things Dave Arnold, that's the guy. I forget like the silliest things when I'm like in front of the camera. Like I just, I like, I turn a blank. And as soon as the camera goes off, I remember everything. And I'm like, wow, that was silly, but that's okay. Um, they got aggressive, Grand Classico. Oh, I assume Grand Class. I see, Grand Classico. More than awesome got aggressively drunk on perfect martinis in Boston, which was basically just three ounces of botanist at the time. Dude, 
That sounds delightful. I like I like the spot in this gin. And personally, adding a little bit more gin to my cocktails is something I am a bit of a fan of. There are probably many different ways out there to create your dry martini. Close enough to the three ounce, I'm gonna be using two and a half ounces or about, I need to do the conversion in my head. What's 44 plus like 30? It's like 75. It's like 75 milliliters of this stuff. And I'm just gonna use my, I'm gonna use my metric measuring majigger here because conveniently there's 50 mils on one side and 25 mils on the other. So I hope I did the math correctly. And if not, well, this is how it's gonna be. Two and a half ounces or about, I think 75 milliliters. Yeah, that's the, the math works out perfectly. Well, no, actually it doesn't. Do the math again. This is about two ounces, about 50. You take the half, so like 60, 65 perhaps? It's okay. I'm not even drunk yet. <laughs> I get so confused. Oh, I didn't put the other ounce in there. Two and a half. Half an ounce. Just about. Just do the math, Cameron. See, it's exactly what I was saying. Somehow when the camera goes on, I become significantly stupider. But, you know, sometimes stupid is as stupid does. And I don't think we're doing stupid up here. Um, so maybe, maybe I'm not dumb. We should just use more positive things to describe ourselves at. I'm not stupid. I'm forgetful and I become a little bit of a dum-dum behind the camera. The next ingredient that we are gonna to add to our very dry martini, not very, very dry, it could be drier. Technically speaking, if you wanted to kind of change things around, a drier martini would just be a martini with more dry vermouth in it. A perfect martini, the other way around, is you take the sweet vermouth and you take the dry vermouth and you put them together, which actually, I have a problem. And I need to, I need to serve this out. I got another book, I got another book. And I, I do not blame the person who got it, but I blame the person who wrote it. And I think I'm getting triggered about the right thing, and I have to go through here and find it. Somewhere in this book, I think it's like a perfect, I think they say how to make a perfect martini. However, it's not a perfect martini. Not the way that I know it. It's just like the perfect way to make a martini. And for some reason, like dare I say the word trigger, it really triggered me. And now I'm gonna go through here and try to find it. Now, they have a perfect old fashioned in here. Um, which apparently uses specifically Woodford Reserve whiskey, which I don't happen to have. I'm sure it's a wonderful whiskey, you know? Oh my God, it's, it's in here somewhere. Well, what I do, while I, while I go through this crazily, maybe I mix the cocktail first, then I go through here, and as I'm stirring, I search. We need a half an ounce of dry vermouth. This guy, half an ounce, or about, I'm, 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 I can't think of it, about uh, 15 milliliters. That's the wrong size. Duh. 15 milliliters, about half of an ounce. There we go, that's lovely. And we also need, this says a dash. I want more dashes of orange bitters. I like the orange bitters. I'm gonna keep the vermouth over here, right in front of my, my love thing here, because we're gonna be using it a lot. A couple of them call for it. I'm gonna grab these orange bitters. They're Angostura, they're classics. I'm gonna do like two to three dashes. That's just, that's just what I like. One, two, or whatever, whatever, that, we'll count that one as a three. I am totally down with it. And we put a lemon twist at the end of it, but first we stir. Well, I search for the thing that triggered me. And as it says, something I always found interesting is that the more dry vermouth, wait, let me do this while stirring. When I put my, there you are. There's a technique to this too that I'm trying to become a master on. So, uh, ooh, the interesting thing is the more dry vermouth you add, the less dry it becomes. For example, a five to one ratio is dry, but a two to one is called a wet martini. So taking more vermouth out makes it more dry. You used to always confuse me. I'm also a little confused. It's been a hot minute since anything that I could call a bartending course, so that's okay. We can all be forgetful sometimes. Let me think about that again. It's the more dry vermouth you add, the less dry it becomes. Oh, dry because the dry part, oh, duh. The dry part is not the, the vermouth because the vermouth is technically the sweet part, I guess, compared to the gin that you put into it. I guess high proof spirits or just base spirits in general, relatively speaking to liqueurs or fortified wines are dry. I have to change my logic up there a little bit. That always, that, that always reminds me of like, when I was in history class or social studies, when we first learned about the political parties, for some reason, I thought that the Democrats were the red ones and the Republicans were the blue ones. And I thought that for years until finally I became a voting citizen myself here in the States. And apparently that's backwards. I don't know how I got that confused. I really don't know, but somehow I got it confused. Anyway, apparently I can't really flip a book while I stir that, so let me do, let me just give this a moment. This shouldn't take too long, and if it does take too long, 
I'll, I'll trigger myself later, I suppose. We'll take that out of context. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect martini. Where's that perfect? Perfect. Perfect martini. Where's the color? Where's the... Perfect cosmopolitan, perfect gin and tonic, the perfect Manhattan, the perfect margarita, the perfect mint julep, and the perfect old fashioned. Oh, well, I guess. I guess technically, they don't say a perfect martini. However, there is a page for the perfect Manhattan, and the perfect Manhattan, I'm pretty sure, is supposed to use equal parts sweet and uh, dry vermouth. Where are you? Page 276 of this book. I will share the name of it The Perfect Manhattan. According to this book, boldly stated, a perfect Manhattan is made with two ounces of whistle pig straight rye, two thirds of an ounce of sweet vermouth, two drops of bitters, any bitters you want, I suppose, and a maraschino cherry. Um, I was always told you mix the sweet and dry vermouth together. This is the book. I wouldn't say it's a book of shame. I just personally don't like it. The bright side of the book is the fact that it's got a bunch of drinks in it that use only like four bottles or less. So if you're trying to figure out how to make the most of your home bar with the spirit that you have, it's probably a pretty good book. So Northern Awesome also says dry and cocktails, we think, means lack of sweetness. So that all makes sense. The vermouth, the vermouth, the vermouth will always have the sugars. This book has you buying expensive whiskeys. It really does. It's just like, dude, apparently if I'm going to stock my home bar with anything, it might as well be the good stuff. Um, and the good stuff is, is apparently expensive. I'm like, I remember like doing research previously where like, just because the spirit, just because the spirit itself is like a, like a top shelf spirit doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to make a better cocktail. I think for the most part, you can kind of cheat things out unless you're going with um, like drinks that are a little more dry or a little more straight. For example, a martini, like if I'm correct in saying, you, you can use a little more expensive of a martini, assuming that the expensive martini is the better one, because it kind of elevates the cocktail a little bit. But if you're gonna make yourself like a Long Island iced tea, you don't need top shelf whiskey. It's gonna, it's just gonna be combined with literally everything else, and it's not gonna make the drink that much better with one up there. I mean, you could use expensive all other ingredients, your triple sec, your gin, your curacao, your everything in your, your drinks, but like, I don't think it makes it any better. I wouldn't know, I've never tried it. Personally, I don't break the bank for my cocktails. It just seems silly. Let me go get my sacrificial yoga box. Yoga box, yoga blocks. And we'll see what things look like a little up close. There's not gonna be too much to see here. It's gonna be, it's gonna be clear. So that's what we're gonna do. This, oh yeah, uh, botanist is about as high up in price as, you, as they'll go for whiskey, gin, etc. Yeah, I feel like I don't need much of that. Actually, when I've been to the liquor store a couple times and I thought to myself like, oh, you know, what, what spearmint am I gonna buy? Cause I run out of gin very often cause I really, really like gin. We're also gonna need a lemon twist by the way. So in the background, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Get yourself a strainer. Whoa, don't fall. That would be catastrophic. Luckily, I have another martini glass. So it wouldn't have all been bad. It's clear. If I would have shaken this, probably would have come out very, very cloudy, and that's just not what I want this evening. It is kind of cool, and I'm not sure if y'all can see it from your angle, but like, the fact that there are multiple spirits in there, and it's not just the gin or the driver mooth, it's like, a, there's a cool little, like, optic effect going on. I don't know if y'all can see that, but I certainly can. That or my stirring glass might have particulates in it, which would be sad. I also need a lemon twist. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this lemon, I'm going to give it a peel, and then I'm gonna twist that peel. And that's how we're gonna do it. Twist. Twist and shout. Did I hear somebody say twist and shout? A little twist. Lovely. I think that looks beautiful. Anderson also says, the beautiful thing that they've come to learn is that mostly every bottle has its place and purpose. Maybe you don't like the flavor of a particular gin in a martini, but it could be great a different way. Another thing that I really wish that I had more context on is filling up my bar with a bunch of different base spirits that are the same base spirit, just a different brand. Because, to your point, just because just because it's also a tequila or just because it's also a gin does not necessarily mean it's gonna treat a, uh, it's gonna treat a let's say a margarita or a martini the same way. Cocktails or spirits themselves have personalities, and that's that's a wonderful thing. There's also some ripples happening. Ooh, there were in the thing. Great. We got a bottle of absolutely toxic gin, and I'm sure it's good for something, but don't know what it is. It's not good for Negronis, gin and tonics, or martinis. Is it like a flavored martini? Is it like a flavored gin? Or is it just like it's got a personality to it? I guess technically, 
your gin can be pretty much anything. Gin itself, to my knowledge, is a juniper, it is a, it's a botanical spirit. I don't remember what the base of it's supposed to be, but it's usually heavily flavored with juniper berries. Juniper, gin, 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 juniper, I suppose. But you can put a bunch of other shit in there. It's still gin. So it could probably taste like something completely different. It's Uncle Val's, did, Uncle Val's did a zested gin, which is supposed to have orange notes, but it tastes like rubbing alcohol. You know, that actually reminds me. One time, I have this, I have this other book of mine that's supposed to be Alice in Wonderland themed cocktails, and I made a cocktail for my fiance's 21st birthday because she really, really likes Disney. Alice in Wonderland is, is done by Disney. So I made, it was a birthday cake martini. And in order to create the birthday cake martini, you have to make vanilla frosting infused vodka, which included buttercream and it was the zest of the zest of lemon inside of your vodka and let it sit for a while probably should have you ever clear i i learned that later on um this was like one of the first like big cocktail things that i ever did it came out terribly and to be honest the the vanilla frosting uh the vanilla frosting infused vodka also smelled like rubbing alcohol was it because it was really cheap vodka possibly perhaps it was also lay like kind of in um i guess what's the term Maybe there's also a piece of that coming from the zest of the lemon. Who really knows? The world. The sky is the limit with that. Just put it in a Long Island iced tea. You know? It's already a terrible drink. How much worse can you get? This is very true. Add 10 more alcohols and everything becomes better. Because, like we said, whether you're an expensive spirit or whether you are a poor, lowly spirit that you picked off off the bottom shelf, everybody is equal in a Long Island iced tea. I guess every you could say that everybody's equal in Long Island, too, in the sense that everybody's kind of living in the slums. Um, I guess that's not that, that that's a bit of a hit my uh, I think one of my one of my aunts live in Long Island That would just be a hit to their particular location Personally, I like Long Island. That's where my family is or at least part of it The good the good part I assure you and I think they're the wealthy ones too if I'm being honest This is a dry martini the ratios that I used uh, Was I'm not gonna say it as a ratio at all. I'm just gonna say ingredients. It was two and a half ounces or about 60 uh, I need to do the math there again. 60 plus 15. That's 75. I hope I'm doing that right. Anyways, about 75 milliliters, I think, or two and a half ounces of gin. I'm blanking. Gin. Half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of dry vermouth, a couple of dashes or just one dash of orange bitters. Stir that thing up, place it into a martini glass, garnish it with a lemon peel, and observe your creation. Yeah, I think there might have actually been some, like, I guess, impurity either in this glass or either, or, or like, the stirring apparatus of mine, the stirring glass, because there's a couple of things kind of floating on top. Maybe it is the vermouth or the bitters. I don't really know. It smells lovely. It's very, very lemony. And it is actually quite sweet. All, all things considered, it's kind of sweet. The vermouth, at least for this particular combination, the vermouth is actually very, very present. I feel it like in the in like the front middle part of my tongue. What I continue to taste, the aftertaste, is the dry vermouth, and it's just kind of buoyanced. It's got buoyancy because of the gin, I suppose. Um, I don't know exactly what the flavor notes of the botanist gin are. I've never actually tasted a juniper. I have junipers. I just had a thought. Two weeks ago, as I was browsing through TikTok, there was a self-proclaimed chef on there that said that they learned their spices by taking the spices and sticking it into the back of their mouth and kind of mushing it up and keeping it there for 30 minutes or so. And I went home and I told my mother this, who's also, who is also a bartender of past, and she was like, that sounds weird. Why would you do that? And I was like, I'm going to do that. So I went into her spice cabinet and I got, I think it was paprika, and I did that. Not that bad. Um... But I have juniper berries, and I had a wonderful, wonderful genius idea. In the spirit of the holidays, I had a marvelously genius idea. Am I a mean one, Mr. Grinch? I don't think so. I've never actually opened this container. It's juniper berries. It's from Vans Spices, um, and I got it from Whole Foods. It's never, like, honestly, there's, this is a learning opportunity that apparently I missed. Let me do a side-by-side -side comparison. I'm actually super curious about this. I want to consider myself a scientist, but I don't have the proper equipment for that. However, I do have a nose and five senses. The botanist gin smells like... Gin. Smells like gin. Juniper berries smell like... That's not very gin- Well, actually...
There is a bit of a similarity there. I can't quite place why. If you imagine, this is, this is what's going on in my head. If you've ever smelled isopropyl alcohol, right? That has a smell to it. If you've ever stuck your nose up to a Sharpie, don't do that. It also has a particular smell of it. Both of them smell like rubbing alcohol, but the Sharpie's got something distinct to it. If I had to liken it, it almost smells like the botanist Gin had a Sharpie marker in it briefly. And it also kind of smells like less so that somebody just drew a little bit, just put a little bit of Sharpie marker inside of this container. But it's also like sawdust. And also like, like some teas that I've had in the past. I don't know exactly what botanical that was though. It might've been juniper for all I know. It's so interesting. And now I'm gonna put one on my mouth because I'm absolutely crazy. Whoa, and not, not drop it on the floor. Oh, that is so. Hmm. It's actually kind of sweet. It's woodsy. It tastes like a bear. There's a sweetness to it. Why look at that. It's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, evergreen like. It's like if you go up to like a, if you go up to a forest and there's a bunch of like evergreens with the with the pine needles and stuff. It's kind of like you took a piece, like took a bit of the Christmas tree. Hmm. So interesting. Wow. Botanist is kind of chamomile for more than awesome on the nose. Citrus and chamomile. That is so interesting. And now that I have the juniper in my mouth, it's like prepped me for it. I'm getting like, it smells like a Christmas tree. Oh my God. <laughs> now the botanist doesn't smell like a Christmas tree. Wow. That is cool. I'm walking into dangerous territory there. I'll admit, as soon as I, I think it was the first time I saw that you could smell Sharpie markers, I saw it on a television show and I immediately was just like, you can? I saw I found the nearest Sharpie marker. I started sniffing it. Um, I definitely don't do that anymore and I definitely don't have a Sharpie marker back here, ironically. It's totally ironically, I promise you that. Also the general pine notes for the juniper. This is, this is true, this is true. This is really cool. I've never done that before. It's a day of discovery. And I taste that, and I taste that in the martini. I think the martini is one of those classic drinks that like, it's, there's, there's a lot of subtlety going on there. And if I, like my palate is not quite prepped and ready to distinguish, let's say a martini from the dry vermouth that went into it, or the martini and the gin that went into it, whether you were to use two different types of gin. Again, I'm rather young. And these are areas of exploration that I will continue to try to refine over the course of my lifetime. It's all a part of the um, taking things a little bit slower, really identifying kind of what's going on and whatnot. And I feel like just in the heat of the moment behind the camera and stuff, I kind of like glide past that stuff because at the end of these things, I'm usually like, what did I do again? Did I have a favorite drink? What, what the hell was I doing back there? So um, this is my practice of stopping, breathing, taking a sip of water every once in a while to cleanse our palate and refine ourselves. I think there's a certain splendor in just being young, spry, and crazy, but sometimes, you know, we just gotta get a little bit older. Stop and smell the roses, stop and eat the juniper, you know? And find ourselves. In any case, welcome back to the casino, the bar. Not really. Did you win big tonight? Is your lucky card also the eight of spades? Who knows? There's another cocktail that I wanna play around with tonight. And the next cocktail is... It's another martini. What is, what, which martini is it though? This martini is a martini called the Gibson. I call it a martini because it is basically a martini. It uses gin or vodka, gin and or vodka, dry vermouth, um, except in this case, at least with this particular recipe, there are no bitters added to it. You just put a cocktail onion on it. That's how you do it. I have a whole container of cocktail onions that I found when I went to the store earlier. <laughs> But it took me a really, really long time to find. Like, it was, like, oddly difficult for me to find these cocktail onions. There was a single jar of them, and it was all the way up on the top shelf, far out of my reach because of my height. Whoa. Um, something was stomping out there. Um, and it was, like, in between a bunch of other things. Apparently, these are best by the year 2025. So I think I will be okay, which is great. Um, so essentially, all we're going to do is we're just going to add, um, we're going to do the same recipe as before, omit the gin, and um, we're just gonna put a cocktail onion on top this time. I don't have any more like martini glasses like this, which is kind of unfortunate. So I'm gonna be using coupe glasses for more or less the remainder of the evening. It's just kind of what I have. Otherwise I would use another martini glass for our technical martini. I'm gonna take my stirring thing. I'm gonna bring it back out. 
and I'm gonna give it a quick wash over here. I'll be back in just a moment. Just a quick wash, and I'll put it into my to my bin of bin of doom. And now it's essentially good. I only have two. I only have two stirring glasses, so that's just this is just kind of what we have to go with. Put my strainer back here. We're gonna go back to our botanist gym because that's the one that I want to use. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna use my botanist gym. I also have Faber back here, which is I think a Philadelphia distillery one. But like, well, actually. In the attempts to try to refine our palate and our olfactory palate, our 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 olet, if you will, I'm gonna try to see what the difference is between these two gins just by smelling them. Pine tree, Ginny, citrus. A little more rubbing alcohol. Not as much in the pine, but still kind of present. Yeah, that's kind of all I'm getting. I'm gonna keep it the botanist gym. I just, I think it's it's fancier. It's the more expensive bottle, which I say now. I, I try to like not use the more expensive spirits because I don't want to have to go out to the store and buy more because I'm a bit of a cheapskate. Um, but I do so. I like, I use the expensive bottles up until it looks like they're about half full. And then I start getting like, I start like barely using them at all because I'm like, no, I'm using too much of it. I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I'm gonna run out of it. Oh my goodness. Let me get another let me get another ice cube as well. I'll be back in just a moment. I'm not that far gone. I didn't go very far. I'm like, I'm right over here. If only I had enough space back here to keep everything on camera, then like, then I would never have to leave. We've been doing some changes in the apartment, but, um, just because it's a bit of a mess over here, so, uh, I... I own my water containers all the way over there. We have the Christmas thing over here. It's holiday season, so you have to change things up a little bit. Make space for some people. I will say, in the in the spirit of the holiday season, in about a week, we will be having a. I'm going to be we'll be conducting a 24-hour charity stream where we will be raising money as a part of Jack Septicai's Thankmas 2022, and we will be raising money for the World Central Kitchen. Our goal. Me and my buddy, me and my buddy Glenifer, is to raise two hundred dollars, which is about the that's the goal that we had last year. We didn't actually hit it, but we're a lot more hopeful this year than we were last year. Plus, it's like we're streaming for like twice the amount of time. Um, I have a Discord server, and I'm gonna be making appropriate announcements there and on Instagram and Twitter and all the loud the horn like everywhere. So hopefully, you won't miss it. Um, show up if you want it'll be fun there'll be cocktails we'll do cocktails and then we'll also play some games all night we'll play some board games in the morning have like breakfast i actually just bought hardware the other day so that i can actually take my camera and bring it downstairs there's a little hole in the corner of the room that allows for like the ethernet cable to go down there i'm gonna put an hdmi cable there i'm gonna put a USB-C cable down there it is gonna be crazy i am i'm so i'm so cool with it oh more than awesome didn't notice but we're all in the figment heavy christmas tree Look, everybody's at the Christmas tree, all the chats and stuff. Um, it's great. Anderson's very lucky to be around and work with so many great gins. Being from Scotland, we have so many amazing gins as well as whiskeys. Interesting. I only know, I, I guess I'm only familiar with, I guess, Scotland's reputation for like scotches, I think. I hope I'm not saying scotch and Scotland in the same sentence because they just sound similar, but they actually have no like similar root there. But I imagine it probably does. I've only had... I, I wouldn't say I've had a lot of scotches. Scotches and um, cognacs are two like kind of upper tier spirits. Scotches are just special. I'm sorry, scotches. Uh, sc scotches, I believe, are fancy whiskeys, and then cognacs are just you know they're fancy brandies. I say just, but I don't mean the emphasis is not on the just. It's I think like the same. It's the same like base ingredient that goes into dis the distillation process. Oh, I need my vermouth. I need half an ounce of that. Don't let me forget. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. I completely lost my train of thought. That's okay. That is way too much. It's too much for me. I'm sorry. I got too crazy. That's okay. That's why I have a little bit been over here. It's just a martini and Rossi. It's gonna be okay. I, I'm very, very particular about my measuring and stuff, so I like to keep things to the book if I can, because I'm still learning. Botanist, I think, is Isle of Ale. <laughs> I lay. I love I lay. I lay what? I lay brick. I don't lay brick. I, I program. It's not laying brick. Laying the foundation of the programming work 
the healthcare industry, medical technology, hmm. which would be your Scottish gin, I think. Oh, we just, oh, botanist is a Scottish gin. Oh my God, does it say that on the bottle? Usually I read my bottles when I get them, but I didn't read this one. I lay dry gin, conceived, distilled, and handcrafted on the island of LA. I don't know if it says, it, it's gotta say. It's gotta say on here somewhere. Imported by Quantro, New York. Hmm, I knew about that. That's so cool. I didn't know that. I learned something new today. I did not know where the island of Islay was, and I learned. All right, so we have dry vermouth. We also have gin in a, in a stirring container. We're gonna grab our stirring spoon. I'm gonna stir that a little bit. Then we're gonna put it into a container. I'm gonna put a cocktail onion on it. It's pretty. Ain't, ain't nothing too, too complicated here. Just gonna give this a stir. I think, I don't know too much about, I guess, what the science would be behind the stirring technique and stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure, like, the more, I think the temperature of the glass, because you're kind of controlling the amount of dilution, the temperature of the mixture on the inside pretty much tells you, like, like how diluted the drink is. For the most part, there's like an upper limit of like how long that you stir for and like how much more, like, I guess, chilled it's gonna get. And I wanna say, if I'm quoting correctly, it's like eight, eight-ish seconds when you stir. And aside from that, you're really just expending more effort. Somebody else did the calculations there. I'm not so sure. I'm gonna grab a little coupe glass and I'm gonna put this, what will soon become a Gibson, inside of it. As I use a cocktail onion. And I guess I'll get the sacrificial yoga blocks too. That's a good idea. Anderson says, I lay is pronounced Isla. Whoops. I used to say I lay all the time. Isla. Isla. The Isla Isla. Isla Isla. I like that. Hendrix too says more than awesome. Maybe he's a Scottish gin. Can't remember which one is A. Asher. Asher? Asher. There's a lot of. And there's nothing wrong with this. But there are a lot of words that I'm finding having a hard time pronouncing in, the, uh, in this chat right now, which is just fine. That's okay. Yes, says Two Step Mojo. I'll raise you one more step. One, two, three, Mojo. That was kind of cool, right? I'm gonna zoom in on this glass. I'm gonna make it. It's making a Gibson. It's a martini with an onion in it. It's beautiful. Maybe we t we tell her she's beautiful because she is on the inside. Ooh, I'm gonna strain that up here. I'm gonna get a cocktail onion. Here we go. This one doesn't have the bitters in it, which honestly doesn't change too much the volume of everything, of anything, so it's all right. It's crystal clear. I could be drinking water and nobody would know. We're also gonna add a cocktail onion. I have a feeling that when I add these co uh, the, the cocktail onion, there's gonna be a little bit of onion juice that goes in there, and I am so curious because I've never had a Gibson before. Another Scottish one for you. A Ooh, Ayrshire, Ayrshire. It's pronounced Ayrshire. Hendrix is from Ayrshire. Ayrshire and not Isla. 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 Ayrshire. 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 I'm going to try to remember that. I'm probably not going to remember it because I suffer from those kind of things. The whole memory loss thing. Not too bad, but it happens. Skewer. Cocktail onion. I'm going to try to get... I'm going to use the beauty of my bar spoon which means I'll probably have to use the other ones, and I'm gonna go in there and grab grab what I need. These yoga blocks are not very steady today, so I'm a little afraid. There's one cocktail onion. Oh, come on. I'm gonna skewer it. There we go. There's one skewer. Oh my goodness, it's kinda, it's kinda juicy. Not gonna lie, this is, these are juicy, juicy onions. And here's another one. Do I dare go for three? I can try for three. Ooh. More than awesome is drinking a lot of Spanish gin when not drinking the botanist one. Also, North Carolina has one of the best gins in America right now in most competitions. Is that like aviation? I think aviation is one of the American ones. I'm sure there, there might be more. There are probably more. I'm gonna do three onions. I'm just like, I'm in a mood today. I'm in a mood for the onions. Two Step says, so when can I sit there and be your taste tester? I'll just sit in a little corner of something off the camera. If you find yourself in Philadelphia on a Wednesday night and DM me separately, we will make arrangements and promise that you will not endanger me or my family, which I'm sure you won't. We can make arrangements. There we go. A couple of cocktail onions in there. It smells oniony. I was going to say Gibson is my guilty pleasure, but there's nothing guilty about it. Tastes fantastic. I'm about to find out. It's my first Gibson. Something I think I'm very proud about. Take a look at this. Isn't that beautiful? I, need to, I forgot to take my obligatory Instagram posts. There's one of the martini. Is one of you Gibson. Hi, everybody. Say hello to the camera. Everybody smile. 
I think, I think, Mojo, I think you blinked. I apologize. I couldn't control. Yes, sir! Aviation is Ryan Reynolds' gin. Conniption gin is the hotness. The hotness. I have to write that down. Otherwise, I am most definitely going to forget. The hotness is conniption. It's a bit of a conniption. Conniption gin equals hot. I'll put, like, some blue flames around it. There we go. Two-step says, yes, sir, I promise I'm too, I'm nice. Just give you a little kiss on the cheeky song or something like that. LOL, you better watch yourself there. Anna might get jealous. Anna is a very, very jealous fiance. Um, I, I, I've been told by many that I'm a charismatic individual. I don't necessarily believe them because I doubt myself, but you get jealous or less, especially when we're out and about. This is the Gibson. It's a martini, except in this case, there are no bitters in it uh, compared to the other recipe. And it's got cocktail onions in it. I wonder, I wonder, wonder, wonder how things are going to change. I'm doing a little bit of my glass over here. I don't think I need that stirring glass anymore. Otherwise, I will go back and I will clean it again later. In any case, a tip. When making a Gibson, you have to add a tiny bit of the pickle brine for some extra flavor. Game changer. Oh, I'm all about game changers. Let's add a touch. Add a touch. I, I, I say a touch. I have a pipette around here somewhere, don't I? Where's my pipette meter? That'll work. Here we go. Here we go. I've got my tools on standby. I'm going to take a little bit of it, and I'm going to add a couple of drops of that in there. There we go. This could be a game changer. Oh my god, there's actually... There's an Instagram thing on the inside. Check this out. The cocktail onions are branded. There's a... There's a little Instagram logo on the inside of the cap here. That is so cute. Well, if this Gibson comes out well, we can blame, we can blame, we can blame Mazetta. Follow their Instagram. Follow everybody's Instagrams. There's a lot of some really cool stuff out there. Yeah, if you're going in on the cocktail onion, also add the brine. Not a lot, just need a little bit of a whisper. That is so cool. I am, I love that. I look forward to seeing how it tastes. Homemade pickled onions also make a huge difference, but that's like an extra step up. I've never done it before, but I've tried somebody else's. I guess to make the pickled onions, you just kind of put onions, you take the little onions and you put them in vinegar, I assume, right? And then I gotta wonder, oh my god, there's so many different types of vinegars out there. I wonder how that even changes it, but that's a whole... Oh my goodness, that is a whole other thing there. Anyway, this is the Gibson, which has been leveled up by the contributions of our beautiful, beautiful chat members. It smells good. It smells, I love, I, I really like, unironically, I love the smell of onions. I really, really like garlic. I'm a fan of Brussels sprouts. Those always just all just seem to occupy the same space in my mind. And this smells wonderful. Oh my God, yeah. That's legitimately, that tastes legitimately different than the other martini. Wow, so the only difference between the dry martini that I made earlier and the Gibson that I made here is whereas we have a lemon twist in this dry martini and uh, two to three drops of orange bitters, this one over here does not have the bitters, does not have the lemon twist. It has the cocktail onions and a few drops of that cocktail onion brine, that, that pickled brine. And it tastes completely different. There is a savory note to this that actually, like, I don't really, I don't, I think the gin is actually f the most forward in this, in this version of the martini because the dry vermouth is kind of lost on me. Instead, what I'm getting as the aftertaste is, it doesn't taste super vinegary. I don't necessarily think that what I'm tasting is specifically the pickle brine in there. I want to say it's like accentuating the gin and more so the kind of, I guess, savory botanical aspects of it. It's not super piney. It's actually a little, despite the fact that it doesn't necessarily taste like vinegar and it doesn't necessarily taste like I put a lemon peel in it. It's, it's like citrusy. It feels more citrusy than the other one. And which is odd because there's technically more citrus in the dry martini than there is in the Gibson. I want to do like a, like go back, kind of cleanse my palate a little bit and go back to the other martini. I know it's been sitting for a little bit. It's diluted a bit. I think another thing that I learned from the Liquid Intelligence book is just like certain cocktails, depending on what ingredients you have in them, will like be completely changed by, I guess, how long you've had them sitting around. I don't remember. It was like a two-page span, and I don't remember what the criterion was, but some drinks are best drinking like immediately. You don't let them sit around when they get, when they like, sit around and get diluted when they get oxidized and stuff you're done it's a, it's this it's a different drink than it was previously and some drinks are the opposite way you can enjoy them for the most part the flavor evolves over time as like ice melts or things intermingle or separate sometimes it helps sometimes it doesn't i don't remember what the criterion is i have to go back to the book
This is wild. Wow. This feels like a this tastes like a completely different drink than this one. And I'm blown away by it. Oh, you know? Okay. That sip there. That sip had the pickle brine in it, the onion brine. Wow. But it's not bad. It's not bad at all. I'm glad that, to the advice of everyone else, I didn't add too much into it. I think maybe I added a, a smidge too much, but this is really good. And actually what I want to do now, I want to kind of mix it around a little bit. I'm not doing very good, but... See if that changes things a little bit. I'll just drop the cocktail onions in there. Man, that is so different. Once upon a time, I was out at a bar with some of Anna's PT friends, and I had a pickleback for the first time. And it was alright. It was like a it was like a back-end bar pickleback. It had like really, really cheap whiskey in it. And I don't think it was mixed properly. It tasted mostly like pickle juice. It was not that good, but I got all the way through it. This is like it's just better than that. That is a wonderful cocktail, my goodness. Man, I have learned something good today. Gibson's. I'm glad that I waited until my quarter of a century to, to finally enjoy this. Well, this is well, well worth the break. <laughs> I'm too afraid of picklebacks. It was like, dude, I completely understand that. Like, I like I was chatting with this one guy there who was who is the boyfriend of another one of her classmates, and he was like, Yo, you ever have a pickleback? I was like, No, I've never had a pickleback. He's like, Oh, I love picklebacks. We should totally get picklebacks together. And I was like, Yes, let's get picklebacks. I want to try this. I like to do mixology. This is such an interesting angle I'm gonna see things from. And it was just bad. It was just salt. It was salt and vinegar and burn. It was cheap whiskey, it was vinegar, and salty salt. And I, I don't even think they put a pickle in there. It was just pickle brine. There was absolutely no payoff. It was... It was not. But um, then again, what do I expect from an open bar that I didn't pay for? So well, I paid for it ahead of time, but it was an open bar. So everybody was getting the... Yikes. I haven't tried one because I thought I'd throw up. I feel like it's, it's, it's such an interesting thing. Oh my gosh. I wonder, like, what's the... Because I'm trying to think of it now. I don't know what the ratios are in a pickleback. Let's just do a quick search of it. I mean, just like vinegar, vinegar, it's like vermouth to me, dry vermouth especially, is a little vinegary. So dry, like dry vermouth or vermouth in general plus that onion pickle brine seems like it would be an okay combination. Gin as well doesn't seem like it would go actively against that flavor either. Whiskey, on the other hand, which I'm pretty sure is what goes into a pickleback, doesn't seem like it gels well with salt or savory pickleness. A pickleback, oh, it can be a shot. Oh my god, is it supposed to be a shot? It's a shot of whiskey chased by a shot of pickle brine. The term pickleback may also be referred to the... Really, Wikipedia? Alright, I'm even more shocked because... I did not shoot a pickleback. I did not take a shot of whiskey and then the pickle juice. No, I got a container, a small plastic cup that had pickle juice in it, whiskey, some kind of whiskey, probably like Banker's Club or something, and ice, and a little straw, and no pickles. So I don't even know, I don't know what this bar thought of it. You know what? You know what? It was an experience, and I'm happy for the experience. I need to go get myself a coaster. I'm realizing I'm making a little bit of a mess over here. I'm going to keep this... I'm gonna keep the Gibson back here with me. This is delightful. The martini glass is not making a bit of a mess. They can they can just hang. Wow, this is, that was good. This is so good so far. The wonderful thing, like, I feel, if I haven't said it before, I'm gonna say it again. One of the really, really cool things that I find about being able to live stream is the fact that there are wonderful, wonderful people out there who are much smarter than I am. Not necessarily smart in an intellectual sense, because obviously I have to be the smartest person in the room, but there are a lot of people out there with much more experience, have been drinking cocktails for much longer. Some people even specializing in particular types of cocktails and stuff, which is super cool. As the novice here, self-proclaimed, there's so much to learn, and I'm sure that anybody out there who is beyond the level of novice probably also, so aptly humbly stays, says that there is still so much to learn. It's like, um, I think the psychological thing is the Dunning-Kruger effect. When you know a teensy tiny bit about something, you think you're a master about it. You're like, oh, I did my own research, and naturally I know everything about something, so I should be the global source of truth on this. Don't need, don't go to the internet and like, like look up these special scientific articles and stuff. No, 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 no. I read a single BuzzFeed article, and I'm a master. That's the peak. As you start to learn a little bit more, you realize how little you know at all. And as you kind of keep going up in kind of an asymptotic manner, or a logarithmic manner, you realize that even when you know a lot, you still think that you know nothing at all. And technically, even if you know 90% of infinity, there's still, that 10% is still infinity, so it puts things in perspective.
And yeah, that was... Whatever I had was not a pickleback. I appreciate the validation. We're gonna move on to another cocktail. It's another kind of a riff. It's, it's not... It's not a martini per se, but it is something that I saw. When I looked up the recipe, I was like, that seems similar enough to a martini that it can inspire the other drinks that I planned on covering this evening. So the one that I have in mind, oh, this, just to back up for a second, this is a Gibson. A Gibson was two and a half ounces or about um, 75 milliliters of gin. I used the botanist, it was very good. Half an ounce uh, or about 15 milliliters of dry vermouth. I used martini and Rossi, it's the only dry vermouth that I have. I'm just kind of trying to get through it because I want to try, I should probably just pick up a smaller bottle of dry vermouth and just like level myself up. Um, and then we also, we, we stirred it, poured it into a glass and just added a few drops of cocktail onion brine. I'd say it was about four or five drops from a pipette. Um, and then we, we, we drank it, we served it up. It was great. No ice or anything like that, not in the glass at least. And it was, ooh, it was oh so delightful. We also made a dry martini so far. It's a martini, but it's dry, which means there's more gin in it, more so than the vermouth. I guess if you were to have like a normal martini, maybe it's like like equal parts gin and dry vermouth, perhaps? Perhaps not. But the other cocktail I want to go through is a cocktail called the Casino. I saw the Casino as I was driving back, from, or as I was in the car driving back from Thanksgiving dinner. I was like, what do they have there? And I looked up Casino cocktails, and the first thing that popped up is a cocktail called the Casino. I don't know exactly where it came from. I got my recipe from Difford's Guide online, and it apparently has gin, maraschino liqueur, lemon juice, and orange bitters. So the similarity that I, excuse me, that I saw there to a martini is the gin. And instead of using a vermouth, instead you're using maraschino, which isn't fortified or anything like that. It's not really a stand-in for vermouth. It's just a different ingredient entirely. And you also actually add lemon juice to it. So I'm guessing it's going to be less martini-like and more so like a, like a kind of sour, sour fruit kind of thing going on there with the gin kind of acting as like a base for everything to float in. If the other liqueurs are like a boat, the gin is the ocean or the pond that we are, that we are, that we're floating in. Anderson says that they'd recommend doing dry vermouth if you're looking for a smaller bottle. Don't know of any other brands that do half bottles. Dolan, Dolan dry vermouth. I will write that down. I think I've definitely seen Dolan in the store before. Dolan dry vermouth. I'm pretty sure I have. I was like, I was at the liquor store the other day. I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna have to go back again because when this cocktail stream comes up, there's gonna, or when this, um, this 24 hour thing pops up. I'm not doing cocktails for 24 hours. That would be absolutely insane. It's only for like four or so, which is also kind of insane, but just slightly less. I need to get more ingredients and stuff. So I do need to go back to the liquor store I have. I need to grab more gin. I need to grab more rum. I need to grab brandy. I need to grab a bunch of things. And luckily I finally have a, I finally have a budget for stuff like that. I'm really starting to figure myself out over here. It should be wonderful. But um, yeah, I feel like I learned only about the small vermouth trick tip recommendation after buying these two big bottles of vermouth because i'm just like i'm probably not going to use these very often i gotta get the big ones and then everywhere i, I saw saying like oh maybe i should have gone with something a little smaller oh well this is just how it has to be it's a learning curve and apparently mine is mine lasts a while in any case so what we need for a casino is it's this one's actually shaken you have to shake this drink so i'm gonna grab my shaking apparatus a little, a little Boston shaker over here. I did have a pint glass and I was using a pint glass for a while because I really liked seeing like the kind of like the color combination that popped up in the um, in the pint glass as you mix the different spirits together. But that pint glass started cracking um, because apparently when you're using a very large ice cube and a glass container that has questionable origins, it starts to crack. The imperfections start to show. So I don't feel like shattering glass all over the bar or into my cocktails and stuff. I'm sure it would be very entertaining, but I'm gonna opt for the metal shaker this time. And I think that's probably the better way to go about doing things. This particular cocktail calls for 45 milliliters of gin. It's it's about it's a little it's a little less than what I'm used to in ounces, so I can't do those those, those kind of um Oh you know what? I can convert that. I can convert that in my head. I think I'm smart enough today. I will use my ounces, uh, my ounces measure, and we'll go with that. All right. So to create your casino, you're gonna need a couple things in your cocktail, uh, your cocktail glass. Uh, first, I'm gonna get ice. I should probably do the ice first. I like that. And I also learned another trick about ice as well. Apparently, when you are doing a drink with ice, what you want to do is you want to kind of, kind of, you want to chill the cocktail shaker. 
So you kill the, shield the cocktail here with us. I've got a big cube and I put two little cubes. Apparently that was exactly what I was supposed to be doing, which is awesome. Um, but the side that you put the ice into, you let the ice kind of get used to the glass, kind of come to temperature. And then what you do is you pour out the excess water. So now that I've put ice into this container here, the ice has begun to melt. It's starting to get to room temperature. I don't have clear ice. I'm trying to figure out the best way to make clear ice from, uh, for my particular workflow. I have a big old freezer downstairs now. So I think I have the space for it now. But this ice is kind of coming to temperature. It's gonna take all like the condensated bits that have attached to it because it just came out to the air, which is a very humid space here in the apartment. And it's gonna come to temperature, excuse me, come to temperature, heat up a little bit, and kind of sweat a bit. And there's gonna be a bit of water at the bottom of this glass. I don't want that water. So instead, what we're gonna do is before we're gonna mix our ingredients in this side of the small tin, and then before we combine both sides together, I'm gonna kind of sieve off the liquid, and then there's only the ice behind for the dilution to happen only during the shaking and not during, I guess, the initial mix there. It's just like a, I, I don't know exactly, like, again, like compared to a lot of other people, I haven't drank it as much, haven't made as many cocktails, so whether it makes a huge, huge difference for my palate or not is probably, it's probably very minuscule. But if I was the one behind the bar serving for a bunch of people, there might be a connoisseur out there who might realize that, ah, uh, a drink is made better that way, perhaps, to a palate that is much more refined than mine. In any case, in the small side of the glass, we are gonna add 45 milliliters or about an ounce and a half of gin. I'm going back for my botanist again. Again, there is absolutely no sponsorship here. I don't need that stuff. I just need, just need good vermouth. I need an ounce and a half, so I need this other side. Oh, there's a, there's a piece of my Christmas tree inside of my shaker. It's plastic. So I probably don't want to drink that. In any case, now it's on half, or about 44, 45 milliliters of your, your whoa, it's gin. <laughs> your gin, that's what it is. Mine's the botanist. You could be using others like one from Ayrshire. I think that was Hendrix. This one's from the Isla Isla. I, I think I'm testing myself. I think I said those correctly. The next ingredient that we're gonna add is about 22 milliliters or about, um, I'm thinking two thirds of an ounce? Is that like two thirds of an ounce? Two thirds of an ounce. Or about two thirds of an ounce of maraschino liqueur. Mine's down here somewhere. It's a tall bottle. It's kind of hard to get out. There we go, but I, but I did it. It's a little difficult, oh, got it. In any case, yeah, I hope I'm doing that correctly. I like, for some reason, I'm completely thrown off of my measurements today. 22 milliliters is gonna be about two thirds because two thirds is about 0.75. Oh, no, no, no. Ooh, it's three quarters of an ounce. It's three quarters of an ounce. Excuse me. I'm somehow, I'm off. I'm off today. 22 milliliters or about three quarters of an ounce of maraschino liqueur. And I need to do this the other way because my microphone's in the way. We need about, here we go, here we go, here we go. 75 percent that is 75 percent of the whole the whole ounce i mean yeah 0.75 ounces just about of your maraschino liqueur what else we got we also need lemon juice we're gonna get some lemons i'm gonna juice them where might those lemons be lemons are hanging right over here i'm gonna take the one that i don't think this needs any sort of lemon peel or anything like that so i can just sacrifice another lemon later we'll get back to it so let's do that I'm gonna need my cutting board because I like to keep things safe. Cut this lemon and I'm gonna juice it. And it said we needed about 15 milliliters, so that's about half an ounce. We don't work in ounces here, so it gets confusing. Now that's fair. And it's, honestly, when I first started doing the stream stuff, I realized, like, there, depending on the website that I went to, some people measure in ounces, some people measure in milliliters, and I was just like, there is an entire other side of the world, I'd say most of the population of the Earth, that is not going to understand a word of what I'm saying if I only speak in ounces. So, I have tried my best to be able to convert things on the fly, but there's like a bunch of other like, various means of measuring out there, but I think most of the world works in, met works in metric, and personally, I think metric is the best way to measure things. It, it just makes sense. I don't know what the heck America and... I think Djibouti is another country. This is a real country. I think they also still use, they use the standard system. There's one other place as well, but I can't quite remember what that is. I just convert everything a ratio is when more than awesome is making drink. 2, 1, 1. 5, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1. 5, whatever's easiest to figure out. Yeah, that also works. I think pr that's probably a very, that's a very nice and like, it's a, 
It's a metric system um, agnostic way of measuring out your spirits and stuff, which is a really, really good idea. I could probably do that. But I already, like, I, I would say I would do that, but I already took all this time to learn the conversions and stuff. And I also, like, because I post things on Instagram and stuff and I want the conversions to be there as well, I made it easier for myself by programming my own, like, interface that allows me to kind of put the recipe in in one conversion and it automatically converts it to the other one. It's a really shitty program, um, but it's mine and I'm happy about it. And uh, I'm trying to, I want to kind of open source that at some point because I feel like it would benefit a lot of other people. I don't like to keep these good things to myself. It just feels, it feels wrong. It feels wrong to keep all the good stuff to yourself. I need to put this lemon thing back over there because I'm going to need it later. So I needed about half an ounce, half an ounce of lemon juice minus freshly squeezed. If you literally have no access to freshly squeezed lemons, it's okay. You can get a pass this time. You can go with store-bought. It's going to be okay. But next time, try to go for the lemon. I'm going to put this back in my fridge. I think I'm probably going to need this lemon again later. So I'm going to take this half of it, put a little paper towel on it, and stick it in the fridge. But we'll be back for it, I think, probably. I'll probably be back for that. What else do we need? Orange bitters. One. That's one. This is really interesting. This recipe calls for one orange bitters. Which orange bitters? How many drops? I don't really know. Just one. One orange bitters. There's no dashes, there's no ounces, there's no milliliters, there's no centiliters, it's none of it. It's just one orange bitters. I'm gonna use the orange bitters that I didn't use already, which is the Bitter Truth orange bitters, and I'm gonna do one orange bitters, which I translate to about two or three dashes. Because I like things orangey. I like things bitter. I'm still learning my bitters too, so this is kind of a way for me to kind of figure things out a little bit more. After you take your... What is it? One and a half ounces of gin, half an ounce, ooh, three quarters of an ounce of maraschino liqueur, half an ounce or 15 milliliters of lemon juice. 44, 22, 15 mils. Those are all the things there. And then one orange bitters, or about two to three dashes. You're gonna shake it all together and you're going to strain into a chilled glass. I forgot to chill my glass. So I'm not gonna chill it. I'm just gonna take what I got. And we're gonna garnish it with what looks like a cocktail cherry. So I'm gonna grab one of those when we get to it as well. I also find it bizarre that an ounce is seemingly just rounded up to 30 milliliters when it's closer to 28. Nah, yeah, you're right about that. I think for the most part, like, it gets a little confusing going between these two measuring majiggers too, because this is, the, 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 the small side of this is an ounce. It's about 29, I think 29.4, 29.6, I don't remember if it rounds up or rounds down milliliters. This one over here, because the fundamental unit of measurement over the seas, I believe, if I read my sources correctly on the internet, is 25 milliliters, which is, which is closer to, I guess, what, like five, six? Of, it's, it's five six of an ounce as opposed to the full ounce there and if you flip things around it gets even worse I think technically two ounces is more like 59 milliliters almost exactly I think it's like 59.1 or 59.2 milliliters meanwhile this one over here is 50 so it's actually more like I guess if you want to take it the other way around five six times two ten six or five thirds five thirds of an ounce it's just it's just wacky. I think for all intents and purposes, I think most people do the conversion as your one ounce is your 30 milliliters and you just kind of riff around things from there. And for the sake of convenience, that's what I'll do for the most part. Unless there's a better solution out there. If there's a better solution for everybody, I'd love to. I think for the most part, as long as you kind of keep your ratios the same, which would err to the side of using the ratio approach as the preferable one, I think you're pretty much okay. I don't remember where I read it, but I think anything smaller than like an eighth of an ounce or, I don't even know that comparison. What is it? If it's quarter of an ounce is about 15, seven ish. It's like, like six, six to eight milliliters. I think anything below that, there's not much that gets added to your cocktail that wouldn't otherwise be, I guess, kind of represented by either more or less of that. Like once you hit that, like it's pretty much quote unquote gone, but there are a lot, there are finer spirits. There are finer cocktails out there that that rule probably does not apply to. Um, and I also just read it on Google. So whether it's good, whether it's true or not, is that not something that I know. So what I just tried to do was take all the take all the dry ingredients out of there. Oh, it seems that there's somebody at the door. I think my fiance's back. Hello, everybody. Hello, welcome back. Hello. 
My fiance has returned. She was out enjoying time with friends. Um, hmm, what do we have here? I have a surprise for you. Oh, you have a surprise for me. What is this? What, what is this? Oh, is this fennel candy? Yes. It's fennel candy. It tastes like licorice. Don't like yeah, it's fennel candy. It tastes like licorice to a lot of people, including you. I did not know. It had a spoon, and I was like, oh, these look like nerds. I'm going to eat them. My fiance came back with gifts. It's little, like, it's little sugarized fennel candies, and I'm going to eat all of them. Mm. Yeah, it tastes like licorice. <laughs> crunchy. It's a very crunchy thing. What was I doing? I'm gonna mix a cocktail. I'm gonna shake things. Here we go. Let those liquid ingredients get to know each other. Start slow if you want to. You don't have to. What are you looking at? They're cocktail onions. You wanna taste it? I don't know. That sounds. You good. probably shouldn't. I don't think you're gonna like it. Like a big pancake of onions. So That's great. A big pancake of onions? Oh, did you have a scallion pancake? Wait, wait, wait. I have a picture. Wait, okay, okay. Hold on. Let me let me shake this drink. You pull up the picture. I'm gonna shake this drink. Y'all sit tight where you are. We'll be back after the shaking break. Anyway. Let's go for it. Apparently, too, there's a time limit to how you shake as well. Otherwise, it just doesn't matter. Ooh, it's a good-looking scallion pancake. Great. Well, it wasn't a scallion pancake. Wait, put your phone up to the camera. We're going to awkwardly zoom in on me shaking while you show off your scallion pancake. I don't even know where you're going here. Man, take a closer look at that scallion pancake. It's not a scallion pancake. Oh, I just don't it? know what it was called. Oh, well. It was like it was... onion marsali decky something. It was Indian. Mm, I don't know. It had. It was like a pancake of like masala, bread. like something masala. It said masala, but masala like, something masala pancake. It had that. It had potatoes in it, onions, and then it had a lot of sauces on the side. Cool. That sounds yeah. lovely. Yeah. Wow, I forgot that. Now that I'm using the metal shakers again, it's harder to take apart. Procession. Ooh, that's lovely. They did a lot of Beethoven. I need to. Ooh. No. Where are we going? I don't think you're gonna like it to the person who brings in licorice candy. Ooh, pancake. Ooh, pancake, licorice. Combine the two together. What do you have? Oh. Licorice pancake. <laughs> there we go. Ding. Oh. Oh, this is so interesting smelling. Well, it smells like maraschino, so duh. Um, I'm gonna take my not so chilled coupe glass. Uh, do I wanna use a coupe glass for this? Nah, I wanna, I wanna, oh yes I do actually. Yeah, I wanna use this one. Yeah, dude. I need a sacrificial yoga block because this thing is gonna look pretty. Is that a coupe glass? It's the pretty coupe glass. Well, I don't, you know, I thought I knew a thing or two about coupe glasses and then I Googled stuff the other day and now I don't think I know the difference between a coupe glass and a Nick and Nora glass. I don't really know. I don't know who Nick nor Nora is um, and I don't know coupe either. So coupe and or Cooper that is. I also need a maraschino cherry. I'm gonna go get a maraschino cherry. The one that I see in the picture is very, very dark. Um, I don't have dark cherries, so I'm just gonna go with these ones. I got them from a friend. I'll get that prepared in the background as I strain out this cocktail. Let's use this strainer, unless I have another one. Better one? Nope, this is all I have. This is a casino cocktail. Oh my god, it looks kind of purple. That might just be my lights playing not, tricks on me. It looks yellowish white. Well, that's because we shook it. It's got clear ingredients in it. Oh, well, actually, it has lemon juice, so it's going to come out clear anyways. No, that's like a yellowish yeah. white. You know, interesting little fact. I didn't realize until starting to read this book of mine that apparently this strainer is intended to pour two drinks at once. I always wonder why it never poured on point. And now I know why. Or is it two drinks? Yeah, there's a little slip. There's a little, there's a block right in the middle. So you could technically pour two drinks at the same time, which is wild. I did not know that. I'm obsessed with Nick and Nora glasses. They are the superior glass over the coupe. I need to know. Nick and Nora comes from a 1930s maybe movie, and they like their high, their high proof drinks in a Nick and Nora glass. I believe that. Honestly, I can't even conceptually tell the difference, but we'll learn if I can remember properly. I plan on Googling it in just a moment after I get my skewer stick. I don't know if you're gonna use a red one. I'm gonna remember. I'm gonna remember this one. Where are you? There you is. I'm gonna get this. Uh, maybe not. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna use a sp Where's my spoon? Where's my spoon at? Where the hell my spoon? Where the hell my spoon? Ah, ah, where the hell my spoon? How am I supposed to make cocktails? 
There we go. Oh, that is a really... Wow, that is not a very... I'm kind of talking to myself here. Here. That's, a, that's not a very happy-looking cherry, but it's the cherry that we have. It's the cherry that we love. I'm putting my fingers on it because this cocktail's for me. Nobody else is going to drink it. Mmm. <laughs> casino. You know, technically speaking, now that I think about it, I feel like the casino cocktail would be better off with three cherries, right? Because, like, because, like... Your casino, your slot machine, you know, you want to get three sevens or three cherries on it. You use three cherries. And I could put three cherries on there. But I don't really want to. I don't think it benefits the drink aside from the whole splendor of it all. But then again, I put in the effort to put on this cool little casino hat and casino shirt. So maybe I do go that far. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Trying to slow things down, trying to appreciate the cocktail a little bit more. We're gonna get the good stuff. We're gonna go full ham on it. Here we go. I'm going for a different container of cherries because I was running out of the other ones. Let's take this drink down a notch. Put the yoga blocks away. Floor. Whoa. Oh no, no, that's on the floor. Whoa. Everything is okay. Nobody was hurt except for my pride. That was the only thing that was damaged here. I need more, I need more cherry. I need, I require more cherries. I'm gonna just use my finger, cause I'm here, I'm the bartender, and I'm making drinks for myself. Two cherries. Imagine, imagine for a moment that you're at a casino and you are rolling the slot machine. You've got two cherries so far, and now you have three. It is, in fact, your lucky day. My God, these things are just dripping with High fructose corn syrup. My goodness, my fingers are a mess. I'm gonna clean that up. I'm gonna clean off some of the ice that did not smell on the floor. That's something according to plan. And my fingers. Probably. Everything is probably okay. I promise that. Honestly, if no mistakes have if no mistakes ever happened at this bar, it would be the first perfect bar in the world. And I'm really glad that I'm not perfect. I'm glad that this bar is not perfect. It's 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 okay that way. It's not things are not supposed to be perfect. If things were perfect, you would be triggering people with the book that you that you serve. You know, like that book that said a perfect Manhattan didn't have dry and sweet vermouth in it. Remember that? I remember that. I was kind of triggered by that. We don't want to be that book. We don't want to be that book. In any case, this cocktail was called is called the casino it's got a much more it's got a higher ratio of maraschino cherry juice in it than i originally anticipated on making this drink with the casino was made with about oh please get the please get the measurements right one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of gin 22 milliliters or about three quarters of an ounce of draw oh maraschino liqueur caught myself there half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of lemon juice plus a single orange bitters i translated that to two to three you shake it up you put some cocktail cherries on top this recipe doesn't say to add more than one cherry or really any cherries at all but i added three because it is our lucky day and I, I want to come out of a. I want to come out of a gambling. I want to come out of a casino with more money than I walked in with. So if if I don't get the jackpot, there's no hope left for anybody. It smells very maraschino-y. Who knew? Not just from the cocktail cherries. It's also I can also smell like the maraschino liqueur that's inside of the drink. My cherries spill, um, slipped right in. That's really pleasant. The the lemon. It's a very very sour drink. So it's not not really my kind of drink. Um, but it was very potently sour, but it's sour, but it's got that maraschino note to it that is completely, like, you can't not notice that in there. It pretty much tastes like lemon juice and maraschino. Maraschino is a little, like, um, it's like a, like a tangy, almost, a tangy, almost tart cherry to it. Um, it's really, really good. It's nice. It's a little more sour, so I think if you were, like, kind of into sour, high proofer drinks, it doesn't taste super duper sweet. The only sweetness that we're really having in there is probably from the maraschino cherry juice that is dripped to the bottom, um, as well as whatever sweetness is kind of in the lemon juice there. The gin, at least for my palate, because the lemon juice is really, really potent there, is kind of loss on me. Um, however, I think it probably would have been better to use, I guess, I guess a gin or a vodka, as opposed to... 
a tequila. I suppose a tequila, a mezcal, a whiskey would probably have a lot more notes that are shining through. And I suppose if you were using gin or vodka for this, the point is that you want the maraschino and the lemon juice to be kind of the spotlight of things. What the historical reason is behind that and how it came to be the casino cocktail, I genuinely have no idea. Which is why we go to the internet. I was supposed to look up something else too. What was I supposed to? Ooh, ooh, the Nick and Nora glasses. I remember. I remember now. What the heck? Nick and Nora versus a coupe glass. Tell me more, Google. Nick and Nora's are more bell-shaped. This kind of looks like a bell. In between a coupe glass and a very small wine glass. In a perfect world, Nick and Nora glasses are good for stirred up drinks and coupe glasses are for shaken up drinks because smaller Nick and Nora glasses fit three to four ounces of liquid perfectly. Okay, so that's another thing that I apparently should note there. A Nick and Nora glass and a coupe glass fundamentally, at least according to nymag.com, NY, I hope standing for New York, they're fundamentally, they fundamentally hold two different measures of drinks. I don't remember how much stuff I put in there. Activate voice modulation. You know, just do something different. Okay, so now we're gonna make cocktails with a funny little voice like this. I don't know exactly how long I'm gonna go for this. This is the first time that that channel activation thing has actually happened. So welcome everybody. Um, it's the bar time now. I'm Cameron, and welcome to the casino. It's run by fucking chipmunks. Anyways, a Nick and Nora glass apparently holds, uh, where was the measurements there? Three to four ounces of liquid perfectly, whereas a coupe glass apparently doesn't get mentioned at all because NY Magazine is asynchronous, biased, and clearly not doing things for the benefit of the reader or the mixologist. Oh, I was also Googling something else. What was it? Oh my God, what was it? The casino cocktail! Casino cocktail origins. We're getting an origin story over here. This is wonderful. I love everything about this. I am so happy that you're the one happy here. I'm also happy. I shouldn't be getting so angry about this. This is wonderful. We're happy chipmunks over here. <laughs> it's Christmas themed, right? Like Christmas chipmunks and stuff? At first, the first thing that came to my mind was chestnuts roasting on an open fire. And then I was like, chipmunks roasting on an open fire. And I was like, no, Cameron, don't think of it that way. That's terrible. I can't tell if this is a voice effect there. Are you doing it yourself? I'm doing it myself. I absolutely promise this. There is no, there's no, there's no, there's no flick of the switch. It's either, it's either that, or it's this, or it's that, or it's this. I, I don't really know. I like to do voice acting stuff sometimes. Not really. I've never gotten paid for voice acting, so technically I don't do it professionally. <sighs> All right, I did it. I activated voice modulation mode. Are you gonna do it again? Anna, don't do it. What? Don't do it again. Why not? Because because I'm staring right at you. You're gonna do it again. <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. In a high voice. Though. Oh, deeper voice. Okay, let's hear it. Um. Okay then. Well, apparently, I'm not very good with my deeper voices, but I'm gonna try my best here. The casino cocktail, according to Difference Guide. Will you give me any? Oh, ooh, there's a Wikipedia article on it. Let's take a look at it. The casino is an IBA official cocktail. Wait, I'm scrolling down the page. Nope, okay. <laughs> the casino is an IBA official cocktail made with gin, maraschino liqueur, orange bitters, and fresh lemon juice. I don't I don't think there's any history on this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This version of the casino cocktail, the one that I'm referring to, first appears in 1909 in The Reminder, a book, the third edition, by Jacob A. Didier. It is spelled D-I-D-I-E-R. It is either Didier or Didier. It's whatever you want it to be. Ooh, so, sultry. Sultry, they say. Mm. Just like the casino cocktail. It's very, very sour. I don't think I'm very into that. Well, it's not. It's not very, very... <coughs> Excuse me. <gasps> All right. <laughs> I did it. I did it. It's a, it's, it's got a nice sourness to it. It's not super duper sour. It's not the sourest thing I've ever had, but it's, it's generally enjoyable, I would say. If you are more into the, the sour kinds, this might be kind of up your alley. Anna, actually. Yeah. You're into sour drinks. Would you like to try this? What's it taste like? Sour cherry. Oh, I like sour cherry. Sour cherry. Please take this. It is either in a coupe glass or a Nick and Nora glass. I'm inclined to think it's a coupe, although I don't know. Actually, let me do some math while you sip that. About 50 mils is about, what? One and a half ounces plus three quarters of an ounce. So like 2.5, 2. no, 2.2, 2.25. Is there tequila in this? No, 2.75, it's like 2.75. It mm, it's gin. Yeah. I was actually mentioning earlier how you completely despise cocktails that use either gin or rum. 
I don't like tequila most. It I smells, thought maybe that I could hide it from you. It smelled funny. It did? And it's more bitter than sour. I don't think it's that sour. I think the bitterness is, well, yeah, yeah, you know. You gave me my least favorite taste. Ugh. All right. We, we exist in things together around here. It's about coexistence, it's about love, it's about friendship, it's about family. It's holiday season, everybody. That is a coupe, I think. Nick and Nora's are skinnier. It is a coupe. Nobody will debate this. This is a coupe glass now. So it shall be, so it is said, so it shall be. So you shall wish it, so it shall be. Um, I think this is what they did in the old Genie show. They put the hands together and they're like, bam, that's it. I dream of Genie, I think that's what that was from. I've never watched the show. Yeah, that's sour. I'm gonna put that onto a. It's apparently sour and bitter, according to me. And that's the thing. The I'm just gonna use the excuse that I usually do. That's the beautiful thing about cocktails. The beautiful thing about cocktails is everyone's palates are different. Some things taste bitter to one person, and some things sour to another. They're they're bubbly, bubbly, fizzy, fizzy, fun, 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 fun. That's the wonderful thing about cocktails. Is this is not the only one. This is not the only one. That's my. That's my little cocktail. That's my little cocktail, dude. I'll have to go downstairs and click that. Shall we debate for the drama? Oh my god, we totally could. Oh my goodness. Well, actually, oh, I was gonna say, mm, Okay. It's got a thick bowl to it. They did say that the Dick and Nora glasses are kind of bell-shaped. It is kind of bell-shaped, although that one website, nymag.com, said that it fits anywhere between three to four ounces of liquid. Now, because I got my recipe and used metric units there, does it technically fall within the three to four quarter ounce range? In this case, no. But effectively, does it? I'm inclined to think so. I'm not exactly sure. I am not the pro here. To be fair, I wish I could have just like referred to like a receipt that I had, but I bought this at a thrift store and it was like the only thing. Essentially, when I when I went to the store trying to look for coupe glasses, I described it as a tall glass, skinny stem with a thin bowl at the top. And I found this glass, I found this glass and a set of four, and are any of them technically coops? I think so? I'm not sure. Again, it wasn't until like, I think over the course of like last week and then I was like, oh, maybe I've been calling these things wrong this whole time, but it's okay. That's the beautiful thing about being a novice cocktail mixologist. We learn things along the way. And if, I'm doing, if I've been doing this shit wrong the whole time, that makes the correction of it that much more satisfying. And we do, we do cocktail lessons with correction. I suppose it's all about correction around here um and if you if you do things wrong you will get the ruler treatment i'm just gonna say for all intents and purposes i haven't done anything wrong yet not not mortally incorrect not morally incorrect either. not ethically incorrect either so far i think nobody's being hurt by these streams and i hope it stays that way in any case we shall move on with the next segment, the final segment of tonight's cocktail stream. We made two riffs on a martini. We made a dry martini, which is a martini that uses more gin than it does vermouth. The dry part not actually coming from the dry vermouth, as we've learned and discussed and not hotly de debated, but it was discussed at the very least, that the dry part comes from the spirit, which is relative to the vermouth, the drier part. The spirit in this case being gin. You can use vodka if you're not partial to gin. It's totally okay. You do what you want to do. It's still a martini because, as the name implies, it's just got to be popular. And that one's apparently a popular one. Um, that was this cocktail over here. It's got a little lemon twist on it, and it had some orange bitters in it. Distinguished between the dry martini and this Gibson that we made, there is no difference aside from the fact that instead of a lemon twist, we used cocktail onions, and instead of orange bitters, we used a little bit of pickled brine. It is a fundamentally different tasting drink, at least for me, than the dry martini over there. It is much better, in my opinion. It's much more, it's got a more savory note to it because of that pickle juice in there, and it's not overpowering or salty or downright disgusting like that pickleback drink that I was once served at a bar, thanks to, I don't remember whose boyfriend it was, it was one of your classmates. Lee. 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 It was Lee. We both had pickleback. Apparently, the pickleback is a shot, no, not a drink. No, that was because Rosa liked it, not because of Lee. Oh, it was, it was the girl. Yeah, she used to have pickle shots. Oh, okay. Well, do, if I recall correctly, that wasn't a shot we got. It was a drink with ice in it. Why you got a drink with it? Anyway, it was very confusing to everybody. That's not a pickleback. There was no place to a debate there. I was conned. I was bamboozled. We move on to the next cocktail. This is a casino cocktail. It uses lemon juice, maraschino liqueur, gin, and um, was there something else in there? 
and some more and, and orange bitters there was also some of that in there as well fundamentally different than the martini or the gibson um much more sour a little bit got more of a bitter note there because of the maraschino liqueur in there i didn't sense the bitterness because that's my palate I got the sour notes because that's what my palate is. My fiance is a fundamentally different person, so she got more of the bitter notes, which is wonderful. We move on to what I will say is the last cocktail for the evening because we're moving, we're moving on. Carry on, my wayward son. And this final one is, it's not, it's not something that's related to the martini per se, aside from the fact that it also uses dry, it also uses dry vermouth. And it's a cocktail that I made a small little TikTok video on. Personally, I haven't made a lot of short form content out there. I most recently got into like TikTok using it mostly as an algorithm, mostly as an app for editing purposes and putting it on like YouTube short it's not shorts because it's more longer than the video because i literally can't stop talking and putting it on an instagram reels and although it's it's not like it's not something that i spend a lot a lot of time on compared to these streams at least i don't think i spend too too much time on it but it's been very very fun and it's gonna kind of been a whole new world of content to me and i'm trying to kind of feel my way around it but it's a drink called the all in the all in cocktail um I got from a Curiata email, and I made a small video on it, and I don't exactly know where the all-in comes from. For some reason, the all-in thought to me, like, like it, it struck me as all-in, like you're at a poker table, and you're going, like, I'm all-in. And so I stylize it, kind of, I imagine the image in my head is like this cocktail that you're drinking while you're at the poker table. Like, you're, you're smoking your cigar, you've got, you've got the cigar in one hand, you've got, your, you've got your glass in the other one, and you've got dire straits ahead of you for the rest of the gambling match i suppose but being that this is a stream and i don't have to vie for people's attention in the hopes that you stick around for just a second longer to get to the end of the video i can take my time here and i can do the research that the all-in cocktail so aptly deserves the all-in cocktail according to a google search because wikipedia and google are the fundamental ground truth of knowledge for anybody out there he says sarcastically um an all-in cocktail what what is it what is it about an all-in all cocktail I don't really see much history on it. It seems just a bunch of different recipes and stuff. Um, let's see. I don't really know what, what's a good website to go to if I'm trying to find like the origins of a cocktail aside from just kind of trying to figure out what the origin is just by, I guess, the ingredients they go into and whatnot. I wonder if I just look up history, does that help me out? Eventually, like, I'm still... Uh, I, I'm doing all this research on my phone. I, at some point, I'd like to set up like a little like screen. I have like technically a screen. Does it work right now? No, it doesn't really work right now. Um, I found where the word cocktail came from. Well, yeah, that, there's a word for cocktail. A co the cocktail, the cocktail itself is a cocktail. I think it came from. It was a, originally like a. Um, it was a particular spirit combination. I don't remember what the cocktail actually was. First instance of the term, the word itself can be left for debate. But there are three popular theories. Hmm. There's the egg cup theory. Egg According cup. to the online etymology dictionary, the origin of cocktail is down to a mispronunciation of the French word for egg cup, cocktail. Cocktail? Or cocktail? 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 New Orleans apothecary, the inventor of Piclan bitters, served brandy with his bitters in egg cups in the late East. Brandy with bitters? The cocktail, the next one of many, perchance. Is the dregs theory. Cocktailings was a term used to describe the mixture that was created when tavern tavern owners combined the dredges or tailings of nearly empty barrels together. The resulting mixture from several barrels could then be sold at a discounted price. This only makes sense when you know that a bigot or the tap of a barrel. Was this is according to taste.com, by the way. A what? Can you say that again? No, please don't. This only makes sense when you know that the spigot, the spigot tap, the spigot, the, the spigot, the spigot. You got it. Oh my God, the spigot tap of a barrel is sometimes referred to as a cock. Oh, <gasps> wow. And then the third theory is the docked horse theory. In the 17th century, the term cocktail was used to describe an animal with a cock or rooster-like tail. Nice. For horses with docked tails. Coach horses and hunt horses' tails were often docked for practical purposes. By the 19th century, Dock the cocktail. other horses, thoroughbreds did not have docked tails. So when a regular horse was entered into a race, its cocktail was noted. Oh, okay. Um, so it's also, it seems that all these cocktails seem to go back to horse references. It's very interesting. Well, there's a horse reference, there's an egg cup reference, and then there's a. 
Those are the three main things. I looked up where you could find the origins of cocktails. And then I realized that it just wanted to work. Hey, you know what? We answered a different question that we didn't even realize to ask. Going back to the all-in cocktail. Thank you for the history on the cocktail. Claps for you. Thank you. And you got that from, what was it, taste.com or something? No. It was Taste? From, Taste magazine? It was from tastecocktails.com. Tastecocktails.com. Tastecockandtail.com. Check it out for yourself. Um, there was a comment that Difford's Guide is usually pretty good with cocktail history there. I see that from Anderson as well. I had Punch pulled up as well as All In. It seemed like, I, I don't really see too much on, di oh, wait, 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 history. Apparently, it was adapted, the All In cocktail was adapted from a recipe created at Nightcap in New York City. Coincidentally enough, or perhaps not coincidentally at all, at punchdrink.com, it goes even further. The Nightcap bar, um is in New York, and apparently is, it says nearly an old pal, the New York City bar nightcaps all in as a the rich velvety layer of creme de caco to the basic base of rye whiskey, Campari, and dry vermouth. I wonder if I click on the old pal while there it tells me, tells me anything else. Old pal, it's an ode to an old friend. Oh, the old pal cocktail, oh, it's a cocktail. Oh, well, look at that. Okay, hold up, we've learned stuff. The all in cocktail. An ode to the old pal. The all-in cocktail uses rye, Campari, and dry vermouth and creme de caco. Punch Drink says that the um, the old pal cocktail uses rye, Campari, and dry vermouth. Garnished with an orange or lemon peel. This is interesting. I like an old pal says more than awesome. I've never heard of an old pal before. That sounds... So that's basically... So if a, if a Negroni is gin, sweet vermouth, and Campari. Instead, you swap out the base spirit. Instead of gin, you're using rye. And instead of sweet vermouth, you're using dry vermouth. You know what? I'm changing things up. I'm making a change. I don't want to do the all-in cocktail anymore. I don't want creme de cake on my drink. I'm going to do an old pal instead. We're changing things up because cocktail history is actually pretty interesting. I think the, there's a, the, the history behind a Negroni, I think, is actually pretty interesting, too. If I remember correctly, the Negroni is just a more alcoholic version of an Americano because apparently the once Count Negroni wanted his Americanos, which uses um, Campari, Sweet Vermouth, and Club Soda. It was like, I want mine a bit stronger. Put some gin in there. Or it might have been another spirit to start off with. I'm not exactly sure, but I think it was gin. In any case, that's where the Negroni came from. And then people nowadays are like, oh, I want a Negroni Spagliato. Instead of the gin, I want Prosecco instead. Or just like take your Negroni and just, just dump a bunch of Prosecco in it. It's also a cocktail. It's also, it's also a drink. Dare we say it is liquid. It most definitely is. So for the old pal cocktail, a new cocktail that I've just learned about tonight because exploration is half the fun of cocktail making, uses rye, Campari, and dry vermouth all in equal parts. It's kind of the rye's answer, if I had to be so bold, to the Negroni. We're gonna need some rye whiskey. I have rye whiskey, luckily. I just kinda gotta pull it out because um, it's kinda, it's tucked back here somewhere because it's some of the good stuff. I have everything organized behind this bar, I promise you that. This one's Old Forester. It's an old pal in an old forester. No, 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 it's the opposite way around. It's Old Forester inside of an old pal. Not like an old pal, like a, like a pal of mine, like somebody who used to be a friend. I'm not, I'm not pouring a bunch of whiskey into like, you know, um, a dog's throat, you know? I don't know why I went to a dog. I have old pals too that are humans. Don't know why I went to animals first. That's a bad juxtaposition, alcohol and animals. Anyway, we need equal parts of it, and I think we need to stir it. Let me double check. Add all ingredients to a mixing glass, add ice and stir until chilled. I'm just gonna put that off to the side. We're gonna need a mixing apparatus. I have one of those. We're gonna need an ice cube. I have significantly more of those. But I only need one. Here we go with it. Grab yourself a big old chunk of ice. Pop it in your stirring apparatus. We're gonna add an ounce of the following, or if you are inclined to go by the metric route, it's about 30 milliliters of each of the following, or if you're more inclined to go the ratio route of things, it is equal parts, one to one to one, of rye, Campari, dry vermouth. Can we still see the dry vermouth? Nope, that was completely off camera. That's okay, that's fine. There is dry vermouth in the corner. Always. There is always dry vermouth over there. I don't need this other cocktail majigger, so I'm gonna put that into my, my bag glass, my, my junk bin. A single ounce, 30 milliliters, or one part to the one part to the one part. Rye whiskey, I'm kinda running low on my old Forester. I really gotta get more. This was one of those, as I was saying before, when you get the good stuff, I use a lot of it almost immediately. I was using 
this rye whiskey for almost every cup excuse me whoa Freudian slip there I was using this rye whiskey for almost every cocktail that I made since after getting it because it was brought to me by a friend of mine who I hold dearly and I used it for everything and then it got to about like this far down the glass and I was like oh maybe I shouldn't be using all of it because mm, it's a really really good I also do more than awesome like a good bottle of Ofo well that's why you're more than awesome because you have good taste I've actually, <laughs> to be, I, you are more than awesome and you will forever be, but I've never actually tried any other rye whiskeys out there. I just, I just haven't gone around. So there might be something better out there. I just don't know. Not off the top of my head, at least. Maybe one day, though, I apparently have to go to the store for more rye whiskey, so it's going to happen eventually. Anyway, an ounce of your rye whiskey, or at least one part, 30 milliliters. We've been through this already. You're also going to need some Campari. I've got Campari. It's the red stuff and the bitter stuff and the orange stuff. It's got it's got all the stuff. That was a reference. Does anybody get it? <laughs> I don't know, dog. I don't know. But we need a full ounce of that. E or you know, even if you're not working in ounces or milliliters or whatever have you, if you just mix equal parts together, you could technically have an entire pint glass full of either an old pal or a Negroni. That sounded suggestive now that I think about what I just said there. But if you combine it in equal parts, it's still technically the drink. So I think we'll be okay. Anderson says, I just got a bottle of Eagle Rare that they're going to fat wash for the Christmas old fashioned. Ooh. I actually like, in the book that I have, Liquid Intelligence, there's a whole section on washing, either fat washing or I guess otherwise. And I'm so looking forward to reading it. I want to like, dude, there are so many different things that I want to try out doing. And just like, you know, with the, I guess my New Year's resolution, one of my New Year's resolution is going to be doing like more like experimental stuff back here. Cause this is, ooh, it's a whole new world and it sounds cool. But definitely. More than awesome also says, oh man, I had some great salted ham wash whiskey a few weeks ago. You can do that? I'm writing that on my board. That is incredible. Salted ham washed whiskey? Salt plus ham um, multiplied by wash. Um, also multiplied by whiskey? Equals... Whatever is in whatever is was in more than awesome's glass. That sounds that does sound more than awesome. Nice. Anderson's gonna be doing it with, with brown butter. I remember where was I where was I seeing brown butter the other day? Maybe it, it might have been on your story, Anderson. It might have been that I saw the brown butter there if you posted something like that. I know I saw it on it was either Instagram or TikTok or somewhere, but this is not the first time within the last like month or so that I've seen brown butter specifically. Or it might have been in the book for all I know. Makers. Ooh, I did a test batch the other day with a spare bottle of Makers. Makers Mark. There's one more ingredient that needs to go into our old pal, and that is, don't forget, oh, it's this guy. It's driver Muth. The secret driver Muth that always existentially exists off camera. Either over there, or down there, or up there in the heavens. Up there, way up, way up there in the top. We need another ounce of that or 30 milliliters, or however much you added of the first ingredients, assuming that you added them in equal parts, which I imagine that you did, because that's that's the recipe, dog. More Than Awesome is working on some blackberries plus black pepper-infused gin for Christmas white elephant gifts. It's such a good idea. If I had more people in my friend group, like in my close friend group that we do the white elephant stuff with, to be able to like give out these really, really cool liquors and stuff, like I totally would. Uh, I think the most crazy thing, crazy I say, I think the most interesting thing that I've done with my liquor specifically, aside from that one, that cake batter, or not cake batter, um, what was it? That frosting infused vodka that I did once upon a time that really wasn't that good. Um, I've done, I've made like, I've made my own Nochino before, which is pretty cool. I have like a whole bottle of it. That could be a pretty cool like white elephant gift, come to think of it. Um, but I've also done like tea infusions with gin before, which is really, really good. It turns on funny colors and stuff. Uh, but there's a whole, I know that there's a guy out there too. Another, I think another Twitch tender. Um, I think, um... It's Larix, Larix Lassina, if I'm pronouncing the term correctly, who does, I think, all their own bitters and stuff. And I think he's trying to do like a company about that, which seems like really, really cool. But there's a whole process to make your own tinctures and stuff like that. And as I, as I get into my older age, as I continue to take my experience to the next level, I want to explore that. Because that sounds, it just, it sounds cool. Like what else could it possibly be? I love trying to use black pepper in cocktails. Ooh, that does sound, Quite literally, sounds kind of spicy. We're going to stir this up. There's no other ingredients that go into it except for some twists that we add as a garnish at the end. So I'm going to stir this for a bit. 
Probably with tonic and lime. Oh, I like the spi I like the spicy drink. Ooh, what was I with that? I like a spicy drink. Says more than awesome. It, the thing will be a good with the to with tonic thing. Probably with tonic and lime. Excellent combo there. Classic, you know, gin and tonic stuff. I made, says Anderson, a lapsum soup chunk plus black pepper liqueur for a competition, but didn't end up entering it. Tasted amazing, though. Lapsung souchong is my favorite tea. It is smoky. It is awesome. As Anna describes, it smells like, if you've ever been on the Epcot ride in Disney World, um, oh my god, what's it called? Spaceship Earth. Spaceship Earth, I think that's what it's called. Um, there's an area where it recalls the historical event of the burning of the Library of Alexandria, and apparently, whatever incense that they use there is what Anna says, it, it's what, is what Lapsang Souchong smells like to her. So to me, it smells like kind of like a campfire, it smells smoky, like you're out there in the woods hiking, and to Anna, it smells like catastrophe. Historically accurate catastrophe, which is a wonderful thing, I think, all things considered. Um, I like the Epcot smell. I, I personally, I love the Epcot smells. Absolutely lovely. It smells like burnt buildings on fire. Just a lovely, lovely smell. Um, if not for the situation that you find yourself in when the buildings are on fire. Um, apparently that happened over the weekend. There was a transformer up the street that, uh, blew up and my power went out over Thanksgiving weekend. I wasn't home, so it wasn't that bad, but I was like, I was remote doing some thumbnail work and I didn't lose any progress. Thanks, uh, thank, thank goodness. Thank goodness on Thanksgiving, thankfully. Nice. Anyway, I made an old pal. I need to put it in glass. Um, actually, I haven't actually used this glass already. I don't think it's necessarily the right glass for the, oca for the occasion, for the drink at least. I feel like you probably want to put it into a coupe or Nick and Nora glass, something that looks, I guess, a little more fancily. Um, but I'm going to put this into a little dye glass that I also got for the birthday. And I was like, I have to use this because it's got dice on it. And it feels very casino-like. So we're gonna use that. We're simply gonna strain it on the inside and we're gonna apply, oh, I can't really, oh, I gotta get a book. I gotta get another book. Something on top of. I'll use this book, which is totally not triggering. The one about the perfect Manhattan or whatever, you know? Prop that up just a tad. Excellent idea. That's one of the things that I wind up forgetting when I'm not, when I'm like, not behind the camera or whatever. I was like, oh, I, I don't know how to prop up my drinks any further. Um, use a book. You have books. I have so many books. Some of them not that good. Make them better as book risers. Um, add ice filter. Sure. Straight into a chilled Cooper cocktail glass. Garnish with a lemon or orange wedge. Peel. I have a lemon. I'm gonna peel that lemon. Oh wait, don't peel it yet. Strain the cocktail up first. Ooh, I need a strainer. Strainer. Ha ha. I get it. Do you though? Strainer into the cocktail glass there we go oh it's splitting out into two parts i did not intend for that to happen but here we are here we are oh that actually doesn't fill that much up of it now technically speaking i could put an ice in there i could technically put an ice cube in there ah uh, for the purposes of presentation i'm gonna put a couple ice cubes in there i want it chilled that's what i'm gonna do yeah, I'll go with that. Let's put a couple of ice cubes in it. Is it gonna make things bad? Probably not. This will probably be what I'm drinking after stream anyway. I got stuff to do. I'm a busy, busy boy. Add a couple of ice cubes in there. Try not to make a mess. There we go. Nice. Couple in there. Raise up the water line a little bit. Add a lemon peel. Here we go. Excellent. I have been getting much better at my peels. It doesn't say to express the lemon, but I'm gonna do it anyway. There we go. That seems expressed, and I'm gonna drop it right up on top. Isn't that lovely? I'm inclined to think that it is. I'm gonna take a small picture of that. That is beautiful. Look at that. Ooh. Yeah. And I don't think I took a picture of the. I did not take a picture of the casino cocktail. So let me go back and do that real quick. There's still like plenty of liquid left in it. So. Ooh, can I get that right in the middle? Y'all can't see what's going on, and I sincerely apologize for that. No, it fell inside. It's okay. I choose not to spend more time on that than I already have. Let's zoom out. Don't need this peeler anymore. We're done. Whoops, that was loud. <laughs> Luckily, it wasn't right next to the microphone. I have done really loud things next to this microphone before, like, exist. In any case, after we take our yoga blocks, put them away, one yoga block, two yoga block, I'm not going to give this book the same treatment. I'm just going to put it off to the side carefully. There we go. That works. 
This is an old pal. An old pal is kind of like a Negroni, except a Negroni has gin, Campari, and sweet vermouth. This is rye, Campari, and dry vermouth. You garnish it with a lemon peel, mix it in equal parts. It really doesn't matter what the amount is. It's whatever fits your glass. I put too little in my glass, so I added some ice. It's gonna change the flavor over time because the ice is going to melt and correspondingly dilute things. But here we go. It smells, oh my God, that is an excellent lemon smell. I continue to forget that expressing lemon oil is just one of the it's such a oh it's such an awesome thing to do i forget that it completely takes the whole it takes your like flavor experience like at least for your smells and just like woo, sends it off in a completely different direction it smells so good more than awesome is saying it's kind of like a negroni but it's a boulevardier except it's not a boulevardier because it has dry vermouth instead you're absolutely right i forgot about the boulevardier you're totally right my god Actually, I think when I made the all-in, which has the creme de caco, I was like, it's pretty much a boulevardier, but you add creme de, creme de caco to it. Um, if the, did the all-in have dry vermouth or sweet vermouth? It's kind of kind of like that. Interesting. In any case, I, I checked that stuff later. Sorry, I had a work message that popped up. I think I just, this is actually really, really cool. Um, complete aside, not cocktail related, work related. There's a conference that's coming up. I do, I do programming work. I work for a small startup company. There's only like a dozen of us, so we're kind of close knit and stuff like that. There's a conference coming up in January, and I was just talking about my boss about it. it'd be really, really cool if I could go to the conference. And he might have just stored, scored me a ticket for the conference, which is really, really cool. And I'm really excited about that. So it's worth celebrating. So in celebration of something I just found out now, I made four cocktails. And I'm gonna drink all of them. Just kidding. I'm not going to. That would be suicide. Whoa, that's good. Whoa, that's really, really good. What is going on there? Okay. Dude, that is, that's not what I thought it would taste like at all. Oh my god. Okay. There is something going on. And I'm trying to dissect what it is. It must be the rye whiskey. It must be the rye whiskey that I'm using. I don't remember whether or not I used rye whiskey when I made the all-in cocktail. Something different. My God, this is almost, it's almost bubblegummy sweet. I don't know where that's coming from. This is hitting me a completely, this is hitting in a completely different direction. It's wonderful together. The Campari, Campari itself has a usually very like, kind of like a bitter orange taste to it. It's got a sweetness that I can detect and I rather quite like. It's combining with the rye in this case. It must be the rye. That's the only possible thing that I can think of. And actually, I can taste I can taste the dry vermouth back there. It's existing on the back of my tongue this time. It's kind of sitting around, but it's combining with the air of the Campari in a way that I never thought possible. It, I don't think it's a coincidence that I've been finding like really, really nice cocktails at like at the end of the stream. And in a way, it kind of makes the content better because like there's a there's a thing that you wait for until the very, very end. That is so cool. Oh, going to, oh, oh, uh, More Than Awesome loves tech conferences for work. They're going to Vegas for a procurement software conference in April. Also back to cocktails, Old Pal is the go-to drink. I'll admit, the other night, like when I was doing my stuff the other night, I was like, I need a stiff drink to get me through the evening. N not in a bad way, in a good way, to like accentuate the work that I was doing. And I was enjoying it. It was very, very fun. But I was like, I'm going to make a Negroni. It's a great go-to and it's wonderful. This might be a really, really good go-to. Otherwise, this is... I only took a single sip of it. Maybe like, maybe I should like calm down a second and take another sip. Maybe it's not all that good. Maybe, maybe I'm just psyching myself out. It's still really, really good. Yeah, there's like, there's like a flavor that exists there. It must be the Campari and the dry vermouth together. It's not something that I'm used to. It's not something that I can pick out easily. I mean, I can pick it out easily because it's distinct and it's different to me, but I don't think I've ever had that combo before. I need to like, I need to check myself. Yeah, no, the all-in did have dry vermouth, but I think the creme de caco completely ruined it for me, I guess. The Campari and dry do something fun and magical. And the express citrus. Ooh, ooh, the citrus did there too. Remember, remember, remember kiddos. Don't drink alcohol, kiddos. Remember, not so kiddos. Your senses of smell and your senses of taste go hand in hand with each other. You can enhance one by experiencing something with the other. Something that I sometimes often forget. The expressed lemon, my god. I don't think this recipe even, at least the, the site that I was looking at didn't even call for expressing the lemon. I just did that because I wanted to. And I'm really, really glad that I did. Wow. That's cool. I'm like awestruck. This is a really good cocktail. 
Holy shit. That's it, yo. That's it. That's a perfect way to end things there. Rice Cerrone. Oh, craps. I missed the start of your stream. That's okay. Because you popped in, I was going to do it anyway. But we're going to review everything that we covered so far. So let's go for it. That, this is pretty much the end of the streams anyway, because I am wrapping things up for the evening. But we made... Ooh, let me take the lucky card and put it back here. We made four cocktails this evening. Not a single one of them was bad. Oh, I'm switching the order around. There were four cocktails on the docket this evening, and I think we're doing things correctly. The first cocktail that we made was a dry martini. Dry martinis can be like regular martinis. They have your gin, they have your vermouth, the dry vermouth in this case, but it's a dry martini because it uses more gin than it does vermouth. Very, very cool thing. It's also got some orange bitters in there, which kind of rounds things out a little bit, makes it a little, I guess, a little more orangey. And there was a lemon peel that was kind of dropped on the inside. The next cocktail that we made was a Gibson, which is kind of martini-like. It is martini-like in the sense that you remove the orange bitters from the first recipe, you remove the lemon peel, and instead what you add is a little bit of pickle brine, and you add three cocktail, or you can have one cocktail onion, um, but I added three because I thought it looked cool. And come to think of it, I didn't actually eat one of these co uh, cocktail onions, and I wanted to. Hmm. Oh my god, that is so good. Mm. Man, the end of the stream has just been treating me so well. Those cocktail ends are freaking delicious. Oh my god. And it made the cocktail it made the cocktail itself. The Gibson in a cat food glass. It's true. And if your cat is named Gibson, even more of a wacky coincidence, it made it super savory. It made it a completely fundamentally different drink than the dry martini, and it's wonderful. Um, the next cocktail that we made was the casino cocktail. Casino. Casino cocktail coming from... There was a history behind that, I'm pretty sure. I don't remember what the history was. Go back and check it, I suppose. But it was pretty good. It has a bitter, sour taste to it because it uses lemon juice, it uses maraschino liqueur, and he also uses gin as well. And I believe there might have been some... There might have been something else in there as well. Oh, there was orange bitters. One orange bitters which I translated to be two to three dashes. It's pretty good. We garnish that with three cherries because if you're at a casino and you're playing the slots, you definitely want to see three cherries across your board or three sevens. But I really couldn't think of a proper garnish analogy to three sevens. I don't know. If you say garnish your cocktail with three sevens, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means to me that I throw a calculator on top of it and type seven, seven, seven in the alcoholic sugary mess that winds up being a part of it. Um... In any case, I digress. And there was one final cocktail that we made as well. Originally, I was going to make an all-in cocktail. An all-in cocktail uses rye whiskey, dry vermouth, Campari, and creme de cacao. But I've been attempting to figure out the history of the all-in cocktail. Apparently, we found ourselves at the Old Pal cocktail, excuse me, which is basically a Negroni ratio-wise. Excuse me, I have to burp that stuff out. We've been drinking all night. Um, but it uses equal parts of rye whiskey, dry vermouth, and Campari. And we expressed the lemon peel over top of it and just kind of dropped it on the inside. And it did, uh, not my words, more than Awesome's words, something fun and magical. I don't think, th this, is, this has been my favorite cocktail of the night. This is like, if I had to like do like a rating system, I rate cocktails that like like hit me out of nowhere as being absolutely magnificent at like the nines and tens on my list. And this is like, this is like a 10. It's not super duper sweet. It is very, very pleasant. It is extremely well balanced. And I'm like, wow, I'm like, part of it was kind of a lucky guess, I guess. And serendipity, because we found it online. But is it really serendipity? When you walk into a casino and you put all your money on the table and you make that craps roll, you make that slot pole, you take that blackjack card and you win and you win big, is that serendipity? Is it luck? Is it karma catching up with you? Have you been a good person? I'm not so sure, but that's not my call. That's fate's call. Thanks everybody for coming to the bar this evening. It's been fun. And now we go to the end screen, because everything is over.
I have some things that I need to work on after the fact. I will not be, oh, wait, 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 important messages. Before you end, before you turn off that channel, very important messages. I will not be back here next week on Wednesday with a cocktail stream. Instead, we will be back on Friday where we are hosting a 24 hour stream in honor of charity. Thankmas 2022 is happening. We're raising money for the World Central Kitchen and uh, we'll be here streaming for 24 hours on Friday. If you love the cocktail stuff, if you pop on at eight o'clock PM Eastern Standard Time, as we usually do, we'll be doing cocktails for about four hours. There'll be a communal punch recipes. I'll be having guest stars. Nobody that you know, only people that I know. It'll be really, I'm really, really looking forward to it and I've been working hard on the production material for it. So I hope it'll be fun. I hope you'll join us. I'll be putting out announcements on Discord and on YouTube and on Twitter and on Instagram. If you miss it, you probably weren't following. And that's not a problem. Maybe that's your thing. But if you want to be up to date on the most proper news on the camera with the next channel, I suppose, drop a follow. Literally anywhere, I guess. It was fun. This is really, really fun. Rice Cerrone, I apologize we came in at the very end. You should you should do a road trip and show city name cocktail. That is an excellent idea. And because it is an excellent idea, I will write it down on my board. Road trip cocktails. Trip. Cock. I'm just going to write road trip cock, and hopefully my future self will remember what I was talking about. Um, have a good night, peeps. Indeed, you don't have to go home. You can't stay here. Closing time. You don't have to go home, but you can stay here. Anyway, good night, everybody. Until next time, y'all. Bye.